Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka, Kag Samek, Kag Samek, Kanuka, Happy Feast of Hanukkah. Uh, I believe we're going into the third day, the third day of Kanuka. We're going into the third day. Y'all climb on in. We'll be going over today. Hey, y'all listen up. Listen up. I ain't trying to hear nobody. Listen. What we're going over today is a temple undefiled. Uh, we finna establish what the temple actually is, how the temple is most definitely our bodies, and how we need to clean our vessels out for we can be ready to reign with Elohim and the new kingdom that's coming. Because that's what this is all about. So we need to make sure that we examine ourselves, examine our temple, or what we call our tabernacle, or what we're going to call our house, and make sure that it's clean. We have to get our houses in order. It has to be clean because the Most High will be coming to inspect it, all right? All right, so we're going to get this prayer off. Y'all climb on in. Shabbat shalom for everybody that's climbing in online. Let's go and get this prayer off, and then let's go and get started. Let's get it. Let's get it done. All oh, praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, me. Let's get it. All oh, praise. Y'all ready? Oh, oh she, yeah. She wrapping her head, huh? All right, let's get it. Hello, yeah. Ya bareka Yahweh Veli Shmerika Ya er Yahweh Purna Elika Vikuleka Yesa Yahweh Purna Elika Beyase Lukashon, Yes, I Yahweh, but now Elika, they are saying the cash alone, they are saying the cash alone. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 May the most I bless you. The most I should bless you. And he shall keep you. And he shall shine his face upon you. He will bless you. And he will keep you. And he will give you peace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's eat. Let's get it. Yahoo. Yahoo. All right. So look, let's get it. So what we're going over is a temple undefiled. What does that mean and what does that look like? A temple undefiled. So I want to what I want to do is I want to go through. Be quiet, little baby. So what I want to do and what I want to go through is I want to go through the Old Testament or what they call the Old Testament and just really pull out different aspects of Torah to see how they dealt with the temple, to see how they dealt with the temple and to see how they dealt with themselves as being priests. And then we're going to have to apply this same thing to the day. Right. Because today the body is the temple. Right. Today, we are the kings and priests, right? So that's the whole point and purpose of this lesson. All right, let's get it. So we're going to go. Let me share my screen with y'all. And y'all make sure y'all got y'all children. Make sure they sitting down and make sure they are quiet. We have to have control over our seeds. They don't run us. We run them. All right, let's get it. Let me uh share my screen. Let's see. All right. All right, so look, we're going to start this off in the book of uh, Leviticus. The book of, matter of fact, let's start this off in the book of Proverbs. Right? 
the book of Proverbs chapter 29. We're going to start it off in the book of Proverbs chapter 29. And I'm just going to give you all some quick keys real quick to the kingdom. Because the reason why we are, are failing as being priests, as being kings, as being prophets, as being husbands over our households is because we lack vision. We don't see the end of the tunnel. We don't have an end game. We just live in day to day and we're not doing things focused on the kingdom. Everything we're supposed to be doing, the end vision should be the kingdom. A man without vision is a man without wisdom, is a man without knowledge, and is a man without discipline. A man has to have vision. A king has to have a vision for his kingdom. A husband has to have a vision for his household. You see that? So a prophet has to have visions to even tell the future. So a, a man of God has to have a vision and have to have a plan for the household, for the temple, for the wife, for the children, for the church, and for the flock. So I want to start this off in the book of uh, Proverbs. We're going to do chapter 29. We're going to start it at 16. Chapter 29, we're going to start it at 16. Uh, we'll let everybody get there, too. Y'all make sure y'all write this stuff down, too. That mic ain't working. All right, we're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29. We're starting at verse 16, family. If anything, need give them your mic. Nehemiah, too. Yeah, there we go. We all good. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 16. Start at 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. Oh, hold on, turn it down. We got some. Yeah, that sound work. That's the God voice. Sound like he's speaking from the heavens. Don't it? <laughs> right. Right. All right, go ahead and try it again. Hallelujah. No, hold on. Right now, yeah, I'll be good. All right, there you go. All right, let's get it. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 16. Uh huh. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. Come on, correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. You see that? So it says, Correct thy son, and he shall bring peace to you. Come on, yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Come on. Where there is no vision. See this? So where there is no vision, notice what he's going to say, because a man must have vision. A man must have an end game plan. A man must know, okay, if I keep the commandments and I have faith in Christ, Yahushua, Jesus Christ, and Nazareth, my end game is the kingdom. What we've been seeing lately is kings and priests haven't been having visions for their household. And the visions that they do have for the household is not for the, benefic the benefits of the temple. It's not for the benefit of God or of Christ. And that's the reason why households are falling apart, because men, king, prophet, and priest have, priests have been lacking vision. So where there is no vision, come on. The people perish. The what? The people perish. The people perish. So we have to have a plan for the church. We have to have a plan, a blueprint for the temple. Now the church and the temple is your wife and is your body, correct? Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, so where is the vision at? We can actually find the vision and the plan in the blueprint that we call the Bible. All right, so start that from 18 again. Where there is no vision. So where there is no vision, come on. The people perish. The people perish. What is your plan for your household? What is your plan for your wives? What is your plan for your children? Wives, what is the plan to keep the household in order while the man come in and bring everything he needs to make for provision? Husband, what is your, your prayer plan? We don't have no plan. We all off our biological clocks. We all out of whack. We don't fast no more. We don't detox. We don't pray in, a, in the correct praying hours. We don't do nothing. We're literally living our lives claiming to be Hebrew Israelites. But if you look at everything we do, how we dress, how we talk, how we, how we, how we perpetrate, we look like heathens. And that's the reason why we're not getting any blessings to the household because the temple is not clean according to what Yahweh caused the temple to be clean. See that just because you detox and you have a specific certain diet doesn't mean that your, your temple is clean. Yeah, your physical body might be clean of parasites and pesticides, but is your mind, is your heart clean according to the will and plan and vision of Yahweh? Huh? 
So we have to have a vision, family. So today, this vision is going to be about a temple being undefiled. What would that vision look like? All right. So what I need y'all to do is in your own heads, visualize what does a temple undefiled look like in the eyes of Yahweh? What does a temple undefiled look like in the eyes of Christ? What does a temple undefiled look like in your own eyes, husbands and wives? Huh? Because that's what we need to be aiming towards, because when you have a vision, it's supposed to come to pass because we was created and made in the image of Yahweh. Right. After his image and after his likeness. Right. So if, if you're not meeting the standards that Yahweh have given you, then that means you got the wrong vision because you create what you speak and think, don't you? Your very life is nothing. It's, it, all your thoughts per proceed and issue forth out of your mouth. Right. And then you you look, you manifest these things into reality. You are a byproduct of your visions and of your thoughts. So if you live in a lifestyle that you don't agree with, it ain't nobody problem in fault. But who? Yours, because that's your vision. You get what I'm saying? So what is the vision or what does it look like to have a temple, which is your body being undefiled? What does that look like? Imagine that to have a body that doesn't have any sin. To have a thought that doesn't have any sin, to have a household that's completely in order, where the children are being taught, being loved and provided for the correct way. Wives that are totally submissive, huh? cooking, making a house is homes. You see what I'm saying? And then the husband is actually king, priest and prophet in the household and doing everything he could by the word of Yahweh. That is a undefiled temple, period. Do y'all realize it? it's three temples? It's the physical temple that the Levites built and then Christ actually called the church a temple. And then we all have our own individual temples that we call the body. All three of them need to be undefiled. All three of them need to be purified, purged and clean. Can you say that your temple is purified, purged and clean right now? Y'all don't have to answer that. But if the answer is no, then you have some work to do because this temple must be clean before it get dedicated to the most high. You know what you dedicate in no, no washed up, dirty ass temple to him. He need it clean. And that's where you get Ephesians 5 from, where he's going to purify and cleanse you by the washing of water by what? The word that he may present the temple of the church. What? Blameless, holy, spotless, wrinkleless. Without what? Sin. That's the vision. That's the vision that every king, priest and prophet need to have while he's running his household. Is my household clean? Dang, I need, look, we need to be like an inspector for sin, going around looking for sin in the household, nicks and crannies, getting under the bed, getting under the, 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 the little dirty wood knocks that be on the little shelves, huh? pulling the TV behind, wiping the sin and the dust from behind the TVs. That's how you're supposed to be looking and eliminating sin. The same way that your wives clean up that household, the same way that grandma and mama used to clean on every Sunday, you need to be doing that every day of your life, of your mindset, of your children's mindset, of your wives' mindset. That's the vision we're talking about here. So we finna paint the picture and let's see what God's vision is for a undefiled temple. Y'all ready? Let's read it. Read 28 again. 29 chapter 18 again. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Where there is no vision. So where there is no vision, come on. The people perish. The people perish. That's the reason why the households is falling apart. Because the king have no vision in his household. The prophet have no vision in his household. The priest have no vision in his household. So his whole family perish. Now, if he ain't got home together, of course the temple ain't going to be together. Man, Uriah just had a whole talk about that. huh? How, how is you trying to get the temple together and your home is in shambles? How is you calling yourself a teacher, but your house ain't being taught? You have no vision. Your vision is about being seen. It's not a it's not a Yahweh's plan, which makes your temple undefiled. Come on. But he that keepeth the law. But he that what? Keepeth the law. Come on. Happy is he. Happy is he. Because that's your vision. If I keep keeping the laws and keep faith and know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is my savior, my vision and end game of my vision will be the kingdom of Yahweh, right? A kingdom of eternity, right? Do you truly have that vision? And if you do, why are you not working towards it? Because your temple is supposed to be clean without spot or wrinkle. But our temples is just all types of messed up. Cobwebs in it, dirt, dust, dirt, termites, rats, all types of things that need to be cleaned out. Let's keep reading. A servant, verse 19, 
a servant will not be corrected by word. Come on. For though he understand, he will not answer. All right, we can stop that right here. Now, let's get into this vision. Let's go into the book of Leviticus, chapter 21. I want to show y'all how much, man, look, so us being priests and y'all being, being wives of priests, the Most High have called so much responsibility to us as being Israel. And reason being is because we are literally the teachers and the salvations of every other nation here on planet Earth. So if you're supposed to be bringing salvation and salvation is of the Jews and not of the Gentiles, and you are a true Jew by ancestral blood and covenant, or what we're going to call the melanin, the covenant blood, then that means that you are held to a higher accountability than any other species and creatures on planet Earth. Now, if you are if you are held high to this high statue of accountability, that means it comes with certain type of ritualistic laws. It comes with certain type. You can't talk like everybody else. You can't walk like everybody else. You can't dress like your average Joe. Everything. Your sex life got to be totally different. The way you talk to your brothers, what you eat, your dietary laws is different. What you put on your back is different. The type of ingredients you use is different because you are a pure being, meaning you need nothing but pure things to go inside of your body and you're supposed to mimic that lifestyle. People supposed to look at you and see God. People supposed to look at you, women, and see your husband, which is your God. How can we do that if we're living a life of undefiled? I mean, of, of, of being defiled. Do that make sense? So look. Christ straight finna raise the bar for us when we go to this Leviticus. If you see what the priest had to go through, the Levitical priesthood with the had to go through just to get in the temple, and then what the temple had to go to before they even sacrificed and gave their prayer offerings to Yahweh, it would blow your mind. Because guess what this temple now is, y'all? What's the temple now? Us. Who's the kings and priests now? Us. So everything we finna read that happened back then applied to us now. Let's go to it. Leviticus chapter 21. We're going to start that deal at one. And y'all make sure y'all write this stuff down because we are in, going into the third day of Hanukkah, which means to be dedicated. What are we dedicating to Yahweh? The temple. So you're dedicating your body, your temple back to Father Yahweh. All right, let's get it. We're going to start it at one. Make sure y'all write this down and uh, read slow for them, brother, because it's some deep stuff we're going to go through. Ah, right, you can go ahead, brother. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron. You see that? So he's speaking to who? He's speaking to the priests, sons of Aaron. But who are the priests now? Yes, Judas, kings and priests. Kings, priests, and prophet. Who showed us a good example of that? David. He was king, priest, and prophet. And had a heart like unto who? The Most High. That's why Judah is the leading tribe, and that's why Christ Yahushua of Nazareth came out of the tribe of Judah. The priesthood came, became us. We are the priesthood now. We are the leaders of the different tribes now, and it's Judah. That's why the crouching lion came from Judah. So he's talking to us, everybody that's in this building. These things now apply to us, what we finna read. And now it's a spiritual wager, and this spiritual wager is more important than the physical. All right, let's read. Verse 1 again. And the Lord said unto Moses, speaking to the priest, the son of Aaron, uh -huh. and saying to them, There shall none be defiled. There shall what? None be defiled. There shall none be defiled. Everything we finna read is about how we're not supposed to be defiling our body, not supposed to be defiling our temple, whether it's your house, whether it's your wife, your children, or your own self. Everything you are around and touch is supposed to be clean because you are a pure human being. You're pure, you're from the heavens. Why are you getting mixed and tingled and, and entangled with earthlings? Huh? Yeah, uh, do me a favor, just an education with age. Oh, no, we, we, I got you. you know, we, yeah, yeah, of course, uh -huh. of course. Come on, man. Yeah. All right, let's get it. There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people. All right, so there shall none be defiled for the dead among his people. You were such a clean people, and we've been called to a, such a high standard, we couldn't even touch dead bodies, y'all. You see that? You were supposed to be so pure and so undefiled that you couldn't even touch a dead body. Ain't that deep? Oh, we. That's deep. Now, let's look up this word defile real quick. And we're going to go back to this. Because once you read through these cleansing rituals, it shows you how pure that the Most High needs you to use you. All right, let's look up this word defile real quick. 
Check this out, y'all. Let's read that. The foul, which is the Hebrew word tamar. Uh-huh. Tamar. Come on. H. 2929. Come on, brother. To be unclean. To be what? Unclean. Come on. To become unclean. Uh -huh. To be defiled, pollute, uncleanliness, utterly. Come on. Be impure. Be what? Impure. So he called us to be what? Pure. Do you have a pure heart? And we ain't talking about your clothes being washed and you ain't use no chemicals in your laundry detergent. We ain't talking about you brush your teeth today. Is them thoughts pure? Is your heart pure? Huh? He's showing them something physical, though. But they can get the spiritual meaning and understanding of it. Because why have my clothes clean? Why not touch a dead body? But I'm thinking about that. Sure. Huh? That don't make sense at all, do it? So he's teaching them something physical, but they can apply it to their actual eternal being or their eternal temple that Paul is going to talk about a lot when we get into these scriptures. You have been called to a higher standard. Christ has raised the bar. For all of us in this room, male and female, there should be no excuses for our petty ass sins that we be committing. None whatsoever. Because you've been called to a higher standard. You've been called to raise the bar. We come on. To become unclean. To become what? Unclean. To become unclean. That's why we have to rededicate the temple. Because the temple have already been jacked up. Think about it. Most of us ain't went born into the truth. We was born into paganism and churches and in and, and the in the Quran and, and Islam and all types of other different madness. Then we came into the truth. And now we on the outward side, we look like we're pure. But on the inside, it's straight dead bones. Graveyard. Huh? When we go clean that, when we go cleanse our heart, cleanse our temple, cleanse our thoughts, cleanse our wicked ways. Instead of just looking like we doing that. That was the issue with the Pharisees. Wasn't that the whole argument and debate between Christ and the Pharisees? He's like, yeah, you Negroes look good. Yeah, y'all do. But on the inside, y'all are liars. Y'all are vipers. Y'all are serpents. Y'all are of your father, the devil. And is that, look, is the devil inheriting the kingdom of Yahweh? Not only no, but hell no. So why are we taking after his ways? Let's read. Sexual. Come on, what? Sexual. And we're going to speak about that, too, because you can do unsexual, do sexual acts that's totally unclean or some that's an abomination. Homosexuality is an abomination. But it's other things that you can be doing and practicing with sex that's considered unclean to God. You see that? We got to talk about that as well. Come on. Religious. Come on. Ceremonial. Ceremonially. Come on. To, to defile oneself. To what? To defile oneself. Uh -huh. To be defiled. Come on. Say sexually, uh -huh. idolatry, come on, ceremonial. Come on. To be regarded as unclean. To be regarded as unclean. That gotta hurt. That will hurt my feelings is the most I came down and looked at me and like, boy, you can't, you ain't even welcome here. You unclean. Well, I be trying to wash my skin off. Unclean, straight up. Unclean. You were unclean. Ooh, we. Yes, that's gonna that's gonna hurt a lot of feelings in that day. Yeah, gotta watch it. There you, there you go, RC. It's the insides. Come on. Uh, it says to uh, to be regarded as unclean, mm -hmm. to defile sexually, ceremonially, re religiously, to pronounce unclean, declare unclean, to profane God's name. Ooh, to what? Profane God's name. And we need to talk about that too. So you can use the name of God in vain just by living unclean, by you sinning. When you know you're not supposed to be sinning is using his name in vain. Come on. To be defiled. To be unclean. To be defiled. All right. Now let's read the strong. The okay. primitive root. Yeah. Strong. It says a, to be foul. To be what? Foul. Come on. Especially in a ceremonial or a moral sense. Especially in a ceremonial or moral sense. We who know about morality. That's talking about your mindset. Your characteristics that makes you a human being. This is what builds your personality. You see that? He like, look, man, your personality suck. Your personality full of wickedness, lust, bad behavior, vain thoughts, selfishness. We have to watch that because that's what defile a man. And then you go into the book of Galatians chapter five. He show you the things that defile a man, right? All right, come on. To defile self. Uh -huh. Pollute self. <laughs> to what? Pollute self. To pollute self. Come on. Be make make self pronounce unclean utterly. All right, let's get back to it. Now, since we know what that means, let's start back in Leviticus. 
chapter 21, and we're going to start from one again. And look, it gets super deep, y'all. It gets super deep. Because remember, we are now the temple. We're going to read all the scriptures on it. I just want to give up the, y'all already know this, but I just like giving up the lesson before we get to it, just in case we never get to the end of it. All right, let's get it real quick. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 1 again. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, speaking to the priest, the son of Aaron, and saying to them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people. You see that? You so, look, you so clean and pure in his eyes, he don't even want you touching the dead. Come on. But for his skin uh -huh. that is near unto him. See that? But he can, he can bury the dead if it's a kin that's near to him. Anybody outside the intermediate family, he couldn't even touch though if they died. Because that defiled him. And if it defiled him, it spreads like a wildfire. If he's defiled and he's praying over Israel, that means he defiled who? Israel. Showing you that your sins and your uncleanliness don't only affect you, but it affects who? Your household and the church. That's why temples must be clean. It's crazy. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Like this happened to me uh, last year or whatnot. The, the feast is coming around and somebody ended up dying. And I had to transfer their body from the bed into another bed. But I, I knew that I touched this dead person's body or whatnot. So it was like, should I should I go to the feast or should I not go to the I'll feast? I blown his phone away. Where you at? He, he, he broke your call. I said, bro, I touched the dead body last night. And I know I can't come to the feast because I'm the foul. Now, if I come to the feast, the foul, in the back of my conscience, I know I touch a dead body. If I show up to the feast, I'm defiling the feast. The whole temple. The whole temple. Oh, the whole temple. I'm like, nah, I can't even do it, bro. Look, I touched the Bible last night. This is why I ain't third. Like, all look, all praise. Yeah. I showed blowing him. I'm like, man, where the hell you at? He's like, man, I touched the dead body. I'm like, oh, what you done did? <laughs> <laughs> touch the dead body. <laughs> you become help you. <laughs> 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 but look, is that is that serious though? that we couldn't even be associated or touch dead bodies because it made us undefiled. And then whenever the priest get undefiled, since he's the shepherd or the angel of the church, he can have his whole church be unclean by even coming in a proximity of y'all, showing you that your sins don't only affect you, it affects your household and everything that's around you. All right? You know what I'm saying? And also we can look too, just go for a little deeper prayer. You might be going to the uh, true story of the I'm going to all of that. Okay, here you go. Know, yeah, most so, definitely. Ceremony, the yeah, ceremony. Yeah, no, nah, we got we got a whole ceremonial Already section. Up. All right, let's get it. Verse two again. But for his kin, it is near to him that is for his mother and for his father and for his son and for his daughter and for his brother. So he was able to bury his intermediate family, the people that was the closest to him. He was able to bury. But anybody outside of that, ain't no, you can't bury no second cousin. Let the dead bury the dead. Can't bury no third and fourth cousin from a uh, cousin Joe in them family. No. You know what I'm saying? I can bury my, my mother, my brother, my father, and my sister under certain conditions. Let's keep reading. Verse 3. And for his sister, a virgin. So only if his sister was a what? Virgin. Only if his sister was a virgin, he can touch her corpse and bury her. Showing you, too, that sex is a form of defilement to another brother. It's not a form of defilement between husband and wife. But once she's been touched, she's been polluted by her husband. She can't even be touched. You see that? So it's just showing it's showing you how deep this truly go and it show you how pure a virgin really is. See that? But these are the straight rituals, a cleansing ritual on how pure we had to be as men or as women, because we're going to get on the women, too. Our temples must be undefiled because there is no spot in the kingdom if you are defiled. Ain't no defiled thing making it to the kingdom of Christ. None whatsoever. Come on. Verse 3 again. And for his sister, a virgin, it is not unto him, uh -huh. which had no husband. Which what? Had no husband. Come on. For her, may he be defiled. So see that? He can be defiled for her. Come on. But he shall not defile himself being a chief man among his people. You see that? So if you a chief man among your people and our chief man is leader, leader, a teacher or a father, if you a chief among your people, you cannot defile yourself. It's certain things you can't touch. It's certain things you can't eat. It's certain things you can't wear. It's certain things you can't say. Or we looking at ourselves like that or we just running around acting like the heathen in Hebrew bodies. Huh? When the last time you checked your words before it came off your tongue? 
When the last time you checked your thoughts, when you thought about what you weren't supposed to be thinking about? When the last time you looked at them clothes and be like, hey, is this going to be a stumbling block? When is the last time you did that? And if you haven't, then you don't have a vision. What we read about in the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 18 on out, is that if, if a man have no vision, it says what? The people perish. Your vision is supposed to be the kingdom. And the only way to get it like that is by mimicking the blueprint that Christ has left back for us. And that's what we're reading right now. The blueprint. Come on. It's crazy. Like what you're saying, like Eliezer, like it, he had a vision. His whole mindset was if I defile my temple in front of these children that's behind me, men, women, and children behind me, they're going to think that it's okay. Yep. So he had a whole vision, and the people did not curse because of what his vision. Yep. Right, boy. And he right. got the kingdom, and he died for a righteous cause. And he didn't go out like no chump sucker. And I bet you a lot of young, y'all of youngest came up after him like, I ain't eating that stuff either. Take me out like you took out my elder. A man have to have a vision for not only his household and his wives, but he have to have a vision for Israel too, because we are kings and priests now. Judas kings and priests now. We just, we have to swallow that. So start acting like it. Let's get it. Verse five, they shall not make baldness upon their head. You see that? We couldn't even make baldness upon our head because that's associated with Hellenistic heathen practices. Grow your hair if you can grow it. You see that? Grow your hair. They couldn't even make bald. They couldn't shave their heads. It's just showing you, though, we couldn't put certain type of blades to our skin and everything. It gets deep, y'all. This is how pure he looked at his people. And we just be the dirtiest man, dirtiest human beings now. When he looked at us, this pure. Couldn't touch dead bodies. Couldn't shave our hair. Come on. Verse 5 again. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Uh -huh. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Couldn't shave the corners of our beard. Couldn't mar our face. Come on. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Couldn't make any cuttings in our flesh, which is like the stuff you see on me now. Tattoos and brands and all of that Hellenistic heathen practices. He said, when I look down from the heavens, I need to be able to see a pure people. I, I can't, I can't see, if darkness all mixed with darkness, then I can't see where the light at. He's like, I need to make sure you are lighted. When I look from the heavens, I need to see where my star sees at. How can he look up from the heavens and see his people if we mingling with darkness? We look like everybody else. Hair shade, bald, suit and tie, crossing our, putting our, crossing our legs like the heathens do. You know, just the regular heathen attire, tattoos all on us, markings, just like the Africans, marred in our faces, but we can't grow beards. Shaving ourselves bald, putting big old earrings in our nose and all types of madness. We are a set apart people, meaning our temple must be undefiled. What did you say? I was going to say, just like when uh, uh, Christ was, you know, up on the cross, he was like, why have you forsaken me? Because he touched upon all those things that his father, when his father saw the sins of the people and not his son. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Let's get it. Verse 6. They shall be. Holy into their God. See that? They shall be what? Holy into their God. So now we see what it means to have an undefiled temple. It means to be what? Holy. Holy means to be completely set apart and devoted to one's deity. Or you truly that. Or you truly devoted to your God. And if you is, that means your temple is not defiled. That means he can come and straight dwell within you. You think he's going to come sit next to Satan? Huh? Yes, yeah, scoot over, Satan. I, I need some room here. That's dialogue. You think you're going to do that in your temple? Your temple must be swept clean and, and prepped. It's a scripture that says you're supposed to be ready and prepared when Christ knock. It says you better answer that deal. Or you prepared. Is your house in order? Is your temple and house clean? Can you say that you can allow Christ and Yahweh into you right now and y'all can sup together. He can teach you and y'all can laugh and have memories and, and he can show you mysteries. Is your temple clean enough for that? That you can allow the most high in your mind. Huh? And he ain't got to be worried about adulterous thoughts. He ain't got to be worried about that thought that you, you was just going to kill a nigga. He ain't got to be worried about that thought you was just looking at your brother's wife butt. He ain't got to worry about none of that. Can you truly say that, sisters? He ain't got to go in and you trying to go against your husband. Y'all setting up traps and snares for your husband. Huh? You hate your husband. You being treacherous towards him and not being submissive. Can he? Can y'all allow Christ into y'all? And he can actually sit, dwell, and feast with you. If it's a no, then you ain't ready for the kingdom. And your temple is defiled. And it needs to be cleansed out. 
It's a hard truth, but it's the truth. Come on. Let's try it again. They shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God. Uh huh. For the offerings of the Lord made by fire. See that? So they had to cleanse themselves just to even make an offering. Show you that you have to make sure that you're cleansed before you even get your prayer on. See that? They couldn't even go to the altar with a gift if they had aught with their brother. So how are we constantly going to the to the altar and going into our prayer closet when we got all type of matter of wickedness going on within and with our own people? You got to cleanse yourself first. This is a purification. You have to come before Yahweh humble with a pure heart. Cleanse. That's how he's going to hear you because he don't hear what? Sinners. We need to relook at this scripture. Straight up, we've been going off. So the best time to get it and to rededicate your temple back to Christ is during this great feast, which is the feast of dedication, where they rededicated the temple back to Yah. Come on. And, and the bread of their God. Uh -huh. They do offer. Therefore, they shall be holy. See that? So the only way you've been holy is by listening to instructions and doing your offerings. Come on. Verse 7. They shall not take a wife that is a whore. See that? You couldn't even take a wife that is a whore. See that? Yes, yo, yes, yo, even your penis have to be holy. Let's talk about it. Yes, you have to have a holy penis. You just can't go around sleeping with everything. You are a chosen seed, a chosen elect of God. You can't be humping on everything because when, whenever you go into somebody, you become one with that thing. What do look? What do First Corinthians chapter six say about that? You cannot be joined. Don't you know that if you join to a harlot, you become one with the harlot? See that? So we even got to watch who we marry. We got to watch who we putting our penises in. We got to watch who we having sexual thoughts about. Because you are called to be pure. You are called to be held to a higher standard. Yes, you are the hot commodity. I know that we've been taught the opposite way. But you are. Come on. Or profane. Neither shall they take a woman put away from her hood. You see that? You can't even take a woman that have been divorced. This is deep stuff. Because she have already been touched and, and, and defiled. So if it's talking about this physically, what do this mean spiritually, y'all? That's the whole point I'm trying to get here. That's the whole point. What's the spiritual implications of what we're talking about here? Huh? Oh, we? Come on. Because even when he put her away, like the reason why you can't take her because she's defiled. She was put away. Anytime a man put his wife away, it's because she committed, she committed adultery. adultery. So she's unclean. So the most has letting you know. Don't take on that woman right there because that woman, had, she's an adulterer. She got divorced. She got divorced. She had to do some unclean things. All right, so she's defiled and you are holy. So you, I don't want you laying down the side of a woman that has a, a, a record of being a, a hoe. A hoe. Ooh. You become a hoe. Because you right. become a hoe. Become First Corinthians chapter 6. So the spirits are transferred amongst each other. Do y'all see the high calling that Christ had for us, brothers and sisters? Y'all Yo. truly see that? Right, we need to be checking that because look, if, if he come and he knock and you open that door and it's dirty, he is not coming in. That's deep. Let me say that again. If he come and he knock on that door and you open that door and it's dirty in there, he peek and he see the bed on the damn floor. <laughs> you know, you see these and these women be looking bad, beautiful women. But you look at that background, bed on the floor, no dresses, shoes all around, dirty house. But, you know, everything looking right, curvy. Hair done, everything. But the, you can tell they true insides by the way they households is. That's how I call when Christ knock on that door, he open that. It look like these Facebook pictures I be seeing. He ain't coming in. Same for the men. Straight up. Come on. For he is holding to his God. Ooh, come on. Thou shalt sanctify him, therefore. See that thou shalt do what? Sanctify him, therefore. Sanctify him, therefore. We must cleanse ourselves. Not only physically. But spiritually as well. We need physical detoxification and spiritual detoxification because it's all types of entities or demons that's been in us that we have to get out of our bodies. And until we do that, we have no spot in the kingdom with Elohim. Come on. Verse 8. Thou shalt sanctify him therefore, for he offered the bread of thy God. He shall be holy unto thee, for I, the Lord, will sanctify you and hold. Ooh, come on. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whole look, it gets even deeper than this. Even your daughters have to be in check, your children have to be in check. Not only you, because remember, the king of his household is king, priest, and prophet. 
His household have to be in order. His daughters and his son. Let's read verse 9. Verse 9 again. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father. So the children can actually make the father defile. By the way, the children's acting. By the way, the son's acting. That's why we must rear them and teach them correctly. You shouldn't be trying to be no head or teach other camp if your household ain't in order. You're working backwards. You see that? You're working backwards. You got to cleanse your temple and cleanse your house first before you try to come lead a whole flock. How is you a priest, but your daughter out playing the holy? That don't make no sense at all. Now you've been defiled because of her action. Let's keep reading. She shall be burnt with fire. She shall be what? Burnt with fire. You see that? This was such a bad thing, and it was such a shame on the priest that they had to burn her on a stake like she was a witch. Huh? So look, hold on. The judgment was death for the head being defiled. That shows you how pure, how important it is for us to be pure. It was so important that if your daughter defiled you, she got burnt on a stake. Now, if that's physical, just imagine the spiritual implications of this, the eternal side of this. Because it says that Christ's judgment is going to be way harsh. It's going to be way worse than the days of the Levitical priesthood. And they was getting brick, stoned, head cut off, burnt on stakes, set on fire, and some more stuff. Now, we think that that's harsh. It said that Christ's spiritual judgment will be way worse than all the lows combined. So if your daughter would get put on a stake and get caught on fire just for playing a harlot because she defiled your name, imagine what's going to happen to you because you using your temple to defile Yahweh on that great and terrible day. Ooh-wee. And then you understand why uh, it's safe to a drop, it's uh, like a drop to a wave yeah. because a lot of people ain't uh, ready to level up like that. Yeah. They ain't ready to get their temple under fire like that. Yeah, look, we call to a high standard. You can't eat everything. That's what you have a dietary law for. And then when you even get into the priest law, you really start reading in the books, especially the lost books. Priests have a different law than the dietary law. They law, they dietary law was way, way more severe. They couldn't eat everything. Not how, how you a teacher and a priest and you eating everything that the congregation eat. They, they couldn't drink wine. They couldn't do a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that we be doing, but we be calling ourselves priests and teachers and all of this other stuff. No, nah, buddy, slow down. Slow down, go back to the drawing board, go back home, make sure your home in order. Then we can go back to the temple and reassess some things. But if you look at these scriptures for what they really is, we've been going off. Because priests can't do everything that the civilian do. But we call ourselves priests and teachers, don't we? Our diet's supposed to be different than the civilians. Our clothing, the way we talk, everything. The way we joke around, that's a sin, the way we be joking. We're supposed to be joking around with each other like that. The scripture tell you that. Priests can't do all of that. We are held to a higher standard and priest's wives or two. A priest's wife is not your ordinary civilian wife because she is running the household of the who? Priest. Who is over the people. Or in the book of Revelation, he called us the angels of the churches. That scared me. That means I got a lot of, I'm an angel over a church. You know I mean, much responsibility that is. I'm pretty sure angels ain't running around killing killing their liver by drinking alcohol all day. I'm pretty sure angels ain't running around blowing out of their mind all day. I'm pretty sure of that. I'm just saying. We have to be held to a way higher standard. And he is expecting these bodies and he's coming to knock on the door to make sure that household is clean and in order. Who we? Come on. Verse 10. And he, that is the high priest among his brethren, Upon whose head the anointing oil was poured. Come on. And that is consecrated to be to put on the garment. <laughs> shall not uncover his head nor rend his clothes. You see that? So the priest couldn't uncover his head nor rend his clothes. And that lets you know that if, when you get into that first Corinthians chapter uh, 11, that when it talk about men having a head uncovered, he wasn't talking about an actual covering. He's talking about Christ. When it says men, women must be covered, he was talking about a husband. You see that? Because priests had to have their head covered at all times. So it just shows you what Paul was really talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He wasn't talking about no physical coverings or uncovering. My wife is covered by me. That I cover her head. Straight up. But come on. Verse 11. But notice this though. He had to have, look, consecrated to put on the what? Garments. He had to have on certain clothes. He couldn't dress like everybody else. Check this out. 
It shall not cover his head nor rend his clothes. Let's keep reading. Verse 11. Neither shall he go in to any dead body, uh -huh. nor to find himself uh -huh. for his father uh -huh. or for his mother. See that? So look, now when you get into the high priest, he couldn't touch nothing, no matter if his intermediate family or not. Who we? Because he's on the highest level. He's in the holies of holies. Thanks. Come on. Thanks. Look, but look, if this is talking about the physical priest in rituals, what do that mean spiritually? And upgrade. Paul broke it down. Upgrade. Yes, and Paul spoke about the upgrade. It's certain stuff we can't do. Straight up. I'm like, dang, I can't joke like that with my brother no more. No, I can't. Then your mama always told you having them jokes, hey, 25% of it be true anyway. <laughs> yeah, better watch your mouth. Straight up. Like, we, we are grown priests. We are straight the guardians of the kingdom of heaven there here on earth. Why are we playing around? This ain't no damn game. Why, why are we playing? Every, everything ain't funny. You are in control of hundreds of thousands of souls. Why is you living your life playing? Say, no, this is not a joke. This is serious. Straight up. Or we be having, you know, I'm a cleanse. My, I'm a fast next Tuesday. No, fast now. All of these different dates. Yeah, I'm a fat. Yeah, see, as soon as I'm done eating this, I'm going I'm to eat like a priest. No, eat like a priest now. Yeah, after this feast is my last time drinking. No, let today be your last time drinking. You a priest or not? <laughs> hey, come on. Verse 12. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary. Come on. Profane the sanctuary of his God. Come on. But the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. Come on. I am the Lord. Now, if you cannot go outside of the sanctuary, nor can you defile the sanctuary, now your body is the sanctuary. What do that mean? Do y'all realize, look, it was so deep that they had to be so cleansed that every time that they went and make a propitiation for Israel, they just had to tie bells around their ankles with a string. And what happened was when they went into the temple, the bells were supposed to keep ringing to let you know that they was clean and they would, they was, because look, if they went in the temple unclean, they would drop dead, y'all. And the priest would be like, damn, I don't hear the bells ringing no more. Hey, the nigga must have been defiled. <laughs> he must have been defiled, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the string was attached to him, but you can pull him out because they couldn't come into the temple because they had died too. So they had to have a long string with bells attached to the ankles of the high priest just in case the bell stopped twink uh, tingling because he was dead because his undefilement, they had to pull him out of the temple. Now your body is the temple. Oh, we now you are the priest. So, what do that mean about you? You got to pull that dead stuff out ASAP. Straight up. Come on. Verse 13 And he shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow, or a divorced woman, or profane, or in holy. These shall he not take. You see that? So, we had, we even, we had to have certain unique relationships. We couldn't lay down with everybody, we couldn't make covenants with every woman. See that it's straight levels to this. We are on the highest level of purity because we are the priests, which wives, if you are married to a priest, you're on the highest level of purity. It's period. Now we're gonna get into Israel too, because this is not just about the priests or the wives of the priests, it's about Israel, period. Because you're supposed to be on the highest level of purity when it comes to other nations. Who we? You gonna say something? So I was just saying, you know, being at the high priest, you're gonna get the birds again. You're dealing with the high priest, you're dealing with the priest, you're dealing with Israel. Even priests had multiple wives, you're dealing with Ah, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? So, but the thing for them, they had to have virgins because wives. Yeah, most definitely. Most so, definitely. You know, again, a lot of us coming to this, so we understand we got, we understand that now that we are new creatures in Christ and we are walking, we are walking in that newness. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
from getting the kingdom. Y'all get me? Same thing for men. Because a lot of women think because they was whores and being ran through that they're done. That's not what we teach in here at all. You know, you can be purified by God by keeping the commandments and being submissive to your husband. Y'all hear me? I just want to put that out there. All right, let's get it. Verse 15. Neither shall he profane his seed amongst his people. Oh, you see that? Can't you look. He neither shall profane his seed amongst his people. Come on. For I the Lord do sanctify him. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in the in their generations that have any blemish. Now check this out. This how deep it gets. It gets even deeper. If they found a seed that had blemishes, say that skull came out the wrong way, or that nose came out too big. Guess what? You wouldn't get in the temple, you funny looking person. <laughs> You wouldn't even get in the temple. Hey, that's, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, 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 you could all right. Hey, for real. Nah, you look, you look, you couldn't be crippled, you couldn't be lame, your nose couldn't be fat. Like a, have you ever seen KRS one? You could not have that type of nose. Yeah, ain't for real. Hey, I'm just keeping it real. Hey, look, look, brother's checking nose is like a bug. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, hey, look, he want hey, look, he want the best of the best of his flock, he wants the best of the stock. He want the best. Hey, you ever seen three hundred? When that little, when that little ugly thing was trying to fight, it be he like, he like lift your, lift your shield up. He couldn't. He like, look. He said you can pick up dead bodies, hey, but you can't be a part of this war, hey, straight up. But that lets you know how special we are to him. Hallelujah. Straight, hey, hallelujah. All uh, praise. Come on. Let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. See that you couldn't even look. You can't even do the offer. Come on. Verse eighteen. But whatsoever. Man, he be that have a blemish, he shall not approach. Come on, now check this out. A blind man. A blind man. Come on. Now, why was the man blind? If you go back to scripture, what happened? He said, is this man blind because of his father's sin? See that? So these sicknesses, he not saying they can't get in because they have these sicknesses. He said, you can't get in my temple because these sicknesses came from what? Sins from your ancestors. Meaning you are what? Defiled by generational sins and curses. Now we see through science, it goes down to the 14th generation, not the third or fourth, scientifically proven. Your sins go down 14 generations. That's over 300 years, y'all. So watch what you're doing. You can affect your seeds 300 years from now off of your sin. Ooh -wee. Come on. A blind man or a lame or he that had a flat nose. You see that? You can't have that flat nose. The nose flat. It's going to go straight down like the KRS-1 nose. That's a prime example of one. Like, look, you can't even do no offerings in the temple. Come on. Or anything super florist. Come on. It says, or any man that is broken footed. Broken footed? Come on. Or broken handed. See that? Because you can't break the bone marrow. Because the bone marrow is where the blood gives birth at. And the life is in what? Blood. If the blood is compromised, you can't get in. You see that? This is how he looks. So he is straight expecting our bodies with a fine tooth comb. Now he's expecting your mind and your soul and spirit. With a fine tooth comb. What he gonna find? Is he gonna find defilement, blemishes, or he gonna find a righteous king, priest, and prophet? That's something you answer yourself. And if you answer that he's not gonna find a king, priest, or prophet, then that means there is no spot for you in the kingdom of heaven and you need to change today. Not plan to change. None of that. You need to change today. We ain't got all day. We might not even make it home. God forbid. There's things called car accidents. See that? There's things called heart failure. You see that? Your artery can stop right now and you don't get no circulation. You can just drop dead. We see healthy people dying like that all day, every day. The clock is ticking. Everybody in here got a biological clock. What a due date on it. It's called the circadian rhythm. Look it up. You have a biological clock where your heart have an actual time inside of your DNA that is going to stop and it ain't nothing you can do about it. Why are you playing? Why are you bullishing yourself? Why are you playing around? Clean your house. Get your house in order. Not the one that's built with brick and mortar. Get it in order. Because he coming to inspect his temple and he want to make sure it's clean. For Christ and the Holy Spirit to dwell in it. Who we? Straight up. Come on. Verse 20. Or crook back. Or what? Crook back. Can't have no hunch back. Y'all be seeing an old white man that's slunched over? You, you can't make an offering. I'm going to have to make an offering for you. Come on. Boy, dwarf. A dwarf can't be no midget. But towards Terry problems, you ain't getting in. Come on. Or that had a blemish in his eye. That's them, them the blood clots. Can't have blood clots in your eye. 
And that's due to high blood pressure, meaning you were stressed out and being fearful. So ain't no fearful man welcome in there. See that? Come on. Or be scorpy. Come on. Or scab. Scab. You can't even have no scab. Watch yourself on them. Hey, a, a scab on your knee? No, nah, we're going to read about that too. And I'm not talking about leprosy. I'm talking about an actual scab. You couldn't even have a scab. All of these things are blemishes in his eyes. Did you see what they had to do for Passover? They had to go through thousands and thousands of lambs, and each one could not have one red hair, or they couldn't use it. Or the hell. Do you realize how much that takes to go through a whole grown sheep and go through each individual hair to make sure all of them are the right color? And then you spend six hours going through one, and you got to throw it out because you found one? Because that meat was going inside of your body? Let you know how, how important your dietary law is, too. Everything you eat must be clean. Everything you eat, since, you know, I believe in veganism and eating plant-based, but if, if you choose that, it's not a sin. You can eat meat. But guess what your, your meat had to be? It had to be a, a veganism meat. It had to be a vegan, uh, veganism cattle that eat plant-based diet. You cannot eat another animal that eats other animals. It's, it's, it's forbidden. Showing you the high-ranking responsibility that he got set for us. And we be treating ourselves like we ain't nothing. Like we ain't nothing. That's crazy. Beating each other down. Brothers talking down on brothers. Making y'all wives feel like they a, a piece of dirt left on a lamp. Huh? Talking crazy to your children. But we see God called us to be straight kings, priests, and prophets. We straight gods here on earth. Acting like the heathen. Like being defiled. Like being dirty. And then use that as an excuse to keep being defiled and dirty. And think it's a spot in the kingdom for you. You have fooled yourself, family. <laughs> Straight up. Come on. Verse 21. No man that have a blemish of the seed of earth. Uh -huh. The priest shall come not to the offer, the offering of the Lord made by fight. Man, I'm glad I'm five. I'm five six. I ain't no dwarf, y'all. I made it. <laughs> I made it pay. I'm short, but I'm most definitely not do a dwarf at a dwarf stage. All right. Straight up. I'm sure, but ain't no dwarf. Hey, come on. I think I think a dwarf is like considered like what four eight and down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, America said, hey, oh, hey, I ain't gonna lie, back then Israel was some tall men though. You know what I'm saying? Christ was tall, David was tall, uh Samuel was tall. You know what I'm saying? But this just goes to show you how important a Mashiach is. Yeah, but, man. Look, men are blemished. Yeah, the Messiah was an unblemished lamb. So looking at yeah. all these uh What's those uh, critiques that you had to you couldn't beat? Yeah, it let you know how pure the Messiah was, man. Because he fit the bill of he all fit of the them. bill. You know that, that unblemished lamb. Like, look, no, nobody could ever compare to a Mashiach. Whether it's David, Moses, all of them men had blemishes. Yeah, like thank the Lord for a Mashiach. Facts, facts, facts. Your spirit tall, man. Body oh, most definitely, most definitely. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure my uncorruptible body. I'm gonna be at least twenty feet. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, at least twenty feet. All right, let's get it. Uh, he as a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. Come on. He shall eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy. Uh huh. Come on. Only he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come not unto the altar, uh -huh. because he had a blemish. That he profane not my sanctuary. Ooh, come on. For I the Lord do sanctify them. Come on. And Moses sold it to her and to his son and to all the children of Israel. Let's keep it going. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 59, start at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 59, start at verse 1. And we're going to start moving this lesson along. But y'all see how, how dedicated he was, though? He like, look, y'all got to be the best of the best. Y'all got to be the best of the crop. And if y'all not, y'all is not being harvested. Y'all going to get hewed in the fire. So if he's like that with the temple, he's like that with the priest. Imagine how he is with us today, because now we are the priest and we are the prophets. Right. And now your body is the temple. Right. Who we let's go. We all three in one. Yes, we are. All right. So, look, we're going to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and start at one. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59. Let's start that deal at one. Y'all get some understanding so far. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray. We're going to read one through ten. Then we're going to speed it up just a little bit. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1. Wow. Yeah, I'm here. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save. You see that? So his hand ain't short. You got a chance if you change now. You ain't so far done and gone. You ain't, you know, you ain't no reprobate. At least I pray you, God forbid. 
So look, you have chance to rededicate your temple. You have a chance to clean out your house and get your house in order. You have a chance to get all of these idols and false gods and lust and alcoholism, anger issues, being unsubmissive, husbands being unsupportive. You have all, you can get all of that out of the temple because it says, behold, Yahweh's hands is not short that it cannot save. You still have a chance because you have breath in your body, meaning that you have a chance to cleanse your temple, right? Right? Hallelujah. Right. Come on. Verse 1 again. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Come on. Behold, I mean, but your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohim. You see that? And iniquities and sin defiles the temple, right? So it says, because you have been defiled. That's the reason why you alienated from God. That's the reason why it's become a separation from God. It's your sin. So if you fix your sin and wash your sins with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, now you can close that gap. So what's keeping you from your blessings and what's keeping you from Yahweh is your body and your temple being defiled by you. Because defilement is most definitely always caused by self. Because if you was rearing and raising your daughter right, she wouldn't be no whore. But re remember what it said, if the daughter played the harlot, it defiled the father. The father had to put her on a stake outside the camp and burn her alive. But that wouldn't have happened if the father had his household in check, right? So before we start trying to teach, before we start trying to, to be the chief over flocks and stuff like that, make sure your household in order. Make sure your children good. Make sure your wives are being fed properly. When I mean being fed properly, I'm talking about the spirit and the word of Yahweh. See that? You have to tackle the household first and perfect being priest and prophet and uh, king of the household before you try to be that to a whole congregation. Otherwise, you're playing yourself. Uriel said something very powerful to me, uh, to me the other day. No, matter of fact, that was today. He said, he said, how is it that we got all this fruit on the outs on the church, but we don't have no fruit in our own house? He said, technically, your children are fatherless. It hit me hard. He like, how is you teaching all these people? People running up, Yaki, Yaki, Uriel, Uriel, Nehemiah, Yaki Ellie. Man, that, that lesson you did was fire. But you, your children don't even know what a feast day is about. Your children can't even answer you a simple question in the Bible. But you are teaching them. You are a priest. You are a prophet. You plan. At this point, it's, you're doing this for yourself. You're not doing this for Yahweh's vision and plans because your household would have been in order first. Boy, they hit me like a ton of bricks. I ready to cuss them out and tell them to get out of my face. Like, man, leave me alone, man. Hey, you know, the truth hurts. Because it made me inspect my own household and I found some blemishes and some inconsistencies within my own temple that I have to cleanse and get right. You see that? But that's just that's that's very, very important to think about. How is you a teacher or a priest or a prophet or a king and you ain't even ruling your household correctly and your children and your wife ain't even under subjection or your children and your wife ain't even learning nothing? Ooh we. But you will be faithfully here every Saturday in front of the camera. Faithfully. On the streets, faithfully teaching the word of God, but your children and your wife know nothing. That is a bad reflection of Yahweh. Straight up. Now, my question is this. Did you really even bear fruit? Did you really even bear fruit? Did you? Because your household didn't get it. Yeah, you brought some other people into the truth, but your, you, you missed out on your household. Did you bear fruit? That's a question that we got to ask ourselves with this. Ain't nothing we need to ask, you know, answer out loud. Yeah, answer is most definitely it's a rock. All right, let's read. Verse 2 again. But your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohim. Come on. And your sins have hid his face from you. Ooh, see that? So your sins, you being defiled, the most high will hide his face from you. Man, come on. So look, when he show his face, he say, behold, he revealed. When he hide his face, he ain't dealing with you at all. That's deep. Come on. That he will not hear. That he will what? Not hear. He do not hear the devout. That's the reason why the priests had to make sure they went through all of their washing ritual, ritualistic practices before they went into the temple. That way the sacrifice could be made a sweet savior on the altar to Yahweh. Otherwise, he wouldn't have, he would have rejected the sacrifice. So y'all see how important it is for us to be pure. Before we offer our sacrifice to Yahweh, now your sacrifices is you keeping feast days. Now your pure praise and sacrifices is you praising him and, and jumping around for him. You spreading forth your hands and you praising him. 
and you're praying to him. These are now our sacrifices, especially according to the book of Romans, chapter 12, one through three. We see what the sacrifices is now and how you sacrifice yourself daily. It's through prayer and worship. But if you have an unpure heart, guess what? That prayer and worship will not be accepted. It will be rejected by Yahweh. Man, that's deep. Facts. Come on. When you sit here and you come to bring your oblation, but inside you still got hate towards your brother. You still got that lot of that blemish inside. He said, look, I do away with all this. Facts. That don't do me no good because you come and heard the file bringing me what I require. So I don't want to do it. It ain't the feet thing. It's the file of the Sabbath. It's the file. It's us as people coming the way we are. It's the file. Man, we finna read it. He say, I hate your feast. I hate your feast. Because y'all devouring them. Y'all hate Y'all, look, we finna, we finna read it. Let's keep reading. Verse Come on. Three. Verse 3. For your hands are defiled with blood. See that your hands are defiled with blood. Shedding innocent blood. You don't have to kill nobody to spill somebody's blood. See that? All you have to do is hate your brother. And guess what you just did? You murdered your brother. See, you see, look, you see how this law became your spiritual now? You don't have to, you don't have to stab me in the back with a knife to be a backstabber. You don't have to deceive me to be a snake. You don't have to kill me to be a killer. All you have to do is not deal with me the way you would deal with yourself. That is hatred. That's murder. Come on. For your hands are defiled with blood. Come on, brother. And your fingers with iniquity. Come on. Your lips have spoken lies. Come on. Your tongue has muted. What does it say? Have uh, muted. Yep. Yeah, muted perverseness. Look, that's a look. That's a defiled person right here. Look, he's killing his brothers. His fingers has just got is involved in all type of sins. His lips speak nothing but lies. His tongue has mother perversiveness. That's what defiles the temple. That's mindset, right? It wasn't what he had on, was it? It wasn't because he didn't get baptized, was it? It wasn't because he didn't wash his hands before he ate it, before he ate something, was it? It was because his characteristics of his mindset, his personality. Am I am I wrong? All right, let's keep reading. Verse four. None call it for justice, Ooh. nor any pleaded for truth. Come on. They trust in vanity. See that where they trust that, where they faith that is in vain things that don't amount to anything. We just read in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 18 and 19, that a man must have vision. And without the vision, what does it say to people? What? Perish. Perish. That vision, the only vision that's supposed to be in your mind is the kingdom. And you working and doing all the things and meeting these goals to get to the kingdom. That's the vision for your household. That's the vision for the church. Anything else leave you for defilement. Come on. They speak lies. They conceive mischief mm -hmm. and bring forth iniquity. Come on. They hatch cockatrice's eggs uh -huh. and weave the spider's web. Come on. He that eateth of their eggs dieth. Die. Come on. And that which is crushed breaketh out into a bite. Come on, brother. Their webs shall not become garbage. Come on. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Ooh, come on. Their works are works of iniquity. of iniquity. You see that? So you can be looking the part. You can be dressing the part. You can be showing up to the feast days. You can be Yahooin, Shalom, Shalom, Laka, hugging. Huh? Y'all can look like that y'all a beautiful couple in public. But it said if your thoughts are not right. You have a lying tongue. If you have murderous imaginations, it says you you would not be accepted in the kingdom. Straight up. Because your works are in vain. Come on. And the act of violence is in their hands. Come on. Their feet run to evil. Come on. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Don't you sound like Proverbs chapter 6, y'all? Come on. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. See that? They thoughts are not right. That's what defiles a man. They thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, of sin. Come on. Wasting and destruction Ooh. are in their path. Come on. The way, verse 8, the way of peace, they know not. See that? They don't know peace. Everywhere they go is destruction. It's utter madness. Arguments break out. Debates break out. Fights break out. Somebody, yeah, division happens. Confusion. That's a defiled person. Always have an issue. Think everybody hate them. No, maybe it's you. That sister got a problem with me. She ain't say shalom in the right tone. 
Maybe it's you. Huh? That brother didn't invite me out to the barbecue. Maybe it's you. Come on. The way of peace they know not. And their judgment, and there is no judgment in their boat. Ooh, come on. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Come on, brother. Therefore is judgment far from us. Come on. Neither do with judge justice overtake us. Come on. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity. Yep. For brightness, but yeah, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. You see that? We're walking in darkness. We know what the light is. We wait for the light, but we never get the light because we continue to choose to walk in darkness. And that's what's going on with a lot of Hebrew Israelites right now. They know they need to do better. Sometimes they even want to do better, but they don't want it bad enough to get their stuff together, to get their life in order, to get their house in order, to get their temples clean and to dedicate their body, mind, and soul back to Yahweh. So now everything you want is just an excuse. You talking. You was a talker. You was a lip service type of person. Ain't no kingdom for you. You are here playing around, using excuses and using your sins and your demons for more excuse to stay in your sins because you truly love sin. You love the defilement of your temple. Straight up, it's wickedly sweet to you. And you too proud to, to admit it. Maybe if you actually admitted that, the most I can deal with you. But you too proud to even admit that. And you're going to stay stinking. You're going to stay scarred with scabs, smelling like mildew, with fever, with blemish, until you do so. The Most High is not coming back to a dirty house, y'all. He, he is not coming back to a filthy house. Y'all know that, right? So when are we going to get in order and clean these temples up? When? We need to start now. There need to be some repenting going on now. Now I'm, I'm going to wait till I get after, you know, after class. I'm going to do it towards the prayer. No, we need to be repenting now, turning back from these sins now. Because we, we don't know if we're going to live the next breath. We don't. Aneurysms happen every day, y'all. Heart attack, stroke, granny strokes, all types of stuff. Come on. We grope for the wall like a blind man. Ooh. And we grope as if we had no eyes. The Rami 28, come on. We stumble at noonday. As in the night, we are in desolate places as dead men. We can stop there right there. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's go to the book of Ezra. Ezra chapter 6. Started at uh, 17. Uh, Ezra chapter 6. Started at 17. It gets deeper. It's time to dedicate our temples to Yahweh, y'all. It's time for us to quit playing. Bring the mops. Bring the brooms. Bring the fabuloso. The Lysol. The pine saw. All of that. It's time to cleanse these temples. It's time to cleanse them because they are filthy and dirty. It looks all good on the outside, the grass cutting everything. But you walk into that house, there's rats and roaches running around. It's time to cleanse these temples. Get your house in order ASAP because he's coming. And when he knocks, you better be ready to open that door. But he can, look, invite him in and he's going to suck with you. Imagine it. Imagine Christ coming and knocking on the, the window and the door of your mind. And then you invite him in, this radio lights, and it, it sits down with you, it sucks with you, and it teaches you. Imagine that. You don't know when he's coming, though. So you got to stay prepared and keep that house clean at all times because he can pop up any day. No man knows, Louis, no man knows the hour of the day. It says he's coming like a what? Thief in the night. You don't know when that thief coming. You don't know when he's coming. You don't know when he's coming. All right, we in the book of uh, Ezra. I'm All right, Book of Ezra, uh, chapter 17. No. I mean, chapter 6. I'm going off. Chapter 6, and Uriel said they're going to start at 15, right? Yeah. right let's get it. Make sure y'all writing this stuff down, because look, we finna start reading some, some very crucial, critical things. Uh, thank y'all all, all for, uh, who's donating on the chat. May the most I bless y'all hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezra, chapter 6, verse 15. And this house was finished on the third on the third day of the month, a door which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. Right. And the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity. So this is speaking about whole Israel, right? Right. All right, all right let's point that out. Hey, y'all, listen to this. Y'all, this is going to get deep. Come on. Kept the dedication of this house of God with joy. They kept what? The dedication of this house of God with joy. Uh, what, 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 what feast are we in? Dedication. Let's see what they did for dedication. Now, check this out. Let's just look up dedication real quick. We're in the book of Ezra, chapter 6 and 16. I got you, Uriel. I'll read it for you, brother. 
Oh, look, what do we see off back? It says Hanukkah in Aramaic. Hanukkah. Hebrews Concordance 2597. Let's look up and see what dedication means. Let's look it up. Man, what just happened? Oh, I hit the wrong thing. That deal going off. What verse was that? Verse 15. Check this out. Let's look it up real quick. Verse 16. Let's look it up real fast, y'all. All right, dedication. All right, let's get it. All right, check this out. Dedication. It's Hanukkah. Hanuk to dedicate. That was actually the word of Enoch. So whenever y'all read the word Enoch, it's really Hanuk, and it means to dedicate or to sacrifice. All right, dedication. Hanukkah. It says a consecration, a dedication to be dedicated to something. Y'all see that? So that's what dedication means. Let's go back to it. So it means to consecrate. What do consecrate mean, y'all? Anybody know what consecrate means? Let's look it up real quick. Hold on. Let's just look it up. I got y'all. See, I got y'all. Hold on. Look it up real quick. Look up word. Check this out, y'all. Consecration is popping up. It says the action of making or declaring something, typically a church, <clears throat> scarred, sacred. The consecration of this cathedral was a magical event. It says in Christian belief, the action of declaring bread and wine to be a representation of the body and blood of Christ. See that? So y'all see what dedication is all about, right? I'm actually y'all sure. And it's really about cleansing and the washing of his blood in your body. So to dedicate literally means to consecrate your body and purify your body to be dedicated back to God. That's all it is, because that's what Christ did. He spread his blood. He cleansed Israel and he gave us back to the father. That was our way back to the father. Because remember, he divorced us. Played the harlot. You divorce somebody, they play the harlot. You can't have them again, according to Deuteronomy chapter 24, right? So the most high love us so much. He's like, dang, how can I get my babies back? He's like, you know what? I'm going to get them back through my son. Y'all see how that work? By the washing of water, by the word or his blood. So that's what dedicated means. It means consecration to declare. Choose ye this day to stand and declare that your body and your temple and your mind and soul belongs to Yahweh. Is we here to declare that? That's right. All right, say it with me. My mind, my, mind, my, body, my body, my temple, my temple belongs, to belongs to Yahweh. My mind, my, mind, my, body, my body, my temple, Belongs to, Christ. belongs to Christ. My mind, my, mind, my, body, my body, my temple, my temple is, not my is not my own. It's owned by Yahweh. Owned by Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praise. Now y'all just declared that. Now let's live by our words. Let's live by these words. You really look like you going to say something. Oh, no, bro. All right, let's go back to it. So we're going back six and we at 16. All right, let's get it, brother. Verse 16 again. Now, look, check this out. It's, it's going to get very interesting, y'all. So now we see that it's, they dedicating, right? Feast of dedication. All right, let's read it. Verse 16 again. And the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of God with joy mm -hmm. and offered at the dedication of this house of God a hundred bullocks. So most definitely they eating and feasting, right? Right. Which is what we're gonna do right after class. Come on. Two hundred grams. Uh huh. Four hundred lambs. Come on. And for a sin offering for all Israel, twelve he goats according to the number of the tribe of Israel. So for dedication, it was for the returning of the temple for all who Israel. Come on. Verse eighteen, and they set the priests in their division. So now they set the priests in their division according to their, their scribes, according to their courses, right? All right, come on. And the Levites in their courses. Come on. For the service of God. Come on. Which is in Jerusalem. Come on. As it is written in the book of Moses. Let's keep reading, brother. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. Come on. For the priests and the Levites were purified together. See that? So now what we're seeing what's happening? We see what's happening on this great feast. A purification. What are they purifying? Their temples, they bodies. Or y'all doing that? Huh? Or we in this feast, you know, got issues with somebody. We in this feast with relationship problems. We in this feast mad at a brother or sister. Or is we focusing on self 
the home first, then on our brothers and sisters in the community or what we call the camp of Israel. That's what this is about. It's about purification, rededicating the temple back to Yahweh. Come on. Purify themselves together. All of them were pure. All of them were what? Oh, come on. And kill the Passover for all the children of the captivity. Y'all see that? So they couldn't even keep Passover or even expect and slew the lambs. And check this out. It, they was look, they even had certain ways that they had to kill the lamb. You couldn't have them scared. You couldn't just bring them to the slaughterhouse like they doing. You had to have a, it was even a certain ritual ceremony in what the way they killed the meat. But they didn't put all that stress adrenochrome in the blood of the meat, and then you eat it and take on the spirits of the animal. It was even certain ritualistic practice on how to hunt, y'all. We ain't following none of that no more. You see that? Who we? But notice it says they had to be pure before they even slaughtered the animal. Come on. Children of captivity and for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves. Come on. And the oh, I got you. And the children of Israel, which will come again out of captivity and all such. Had, had had separated themselves unto them for the filthiness of the heathen of the land. Y'all see that? We couldn't even deal with the heathen because they were so filthy. So look, if you can't deal with a heathen because they filthy, what about a son, a daughter, a household? What about a brother? Huh? We have to get that together, right? Is we doing that this day? Is we doing that now? Is we getting rid of all the filth out of our hearts, mind, and soul? Is we? I can't hear it. Is we? Yeah. All right, y'all quiet. Come on. It said, to seek the Lord God of Israel did eat. Come and, on. And kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy. For the Lord had made them joyful and turned the heart of the kings of Assyria to them to strengthen the hands and the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Hallelujah. Right, we're going to get two more scriptures, then we're going to go into how the body is the temple and what we truly supposed to be doing here, y'all. All right, let's go into second, uh, second Chronicles chapter 29. Let's talk about the temple. So we, we didn't see how the priests had to be in the temple, how pure they had to be, and how they couldn't be defiled, right? Talk about the priests and the kings and the prophet. Now let's get into the actual temple because the building, the temple had to be clean too. It had to be dedicated to God too. So not only did the men have to be dedicated to God and their temples had to be clean, but the actual physical temple had to be clean and dedicated to God as well. Meaning that your house, Supposed to be devoted and dedicated to Yahweh as well. I'm supposed to be able to walk in your house and know that this is a house of God and a, and a man of God is living in his house. Straight up. Everything that's around you, everything you touch, everything that you're about, supposed to look like Yahweh. Everything. You, your body, your wife, your children, your, chi your I mean, your pets, hey, everything. Hey, I'm just saying, didn't the pets fast? When Jonah didn't look. In the city of Nineveh, did everything fast? Even the cattle couldn't eat. Everybody uh, participating in this. And that's what we got to get back to with everything you touch and do. Everything you put your hand forth to do is done in righteousness and it's done in undefilement. Not in defilement, but undefilement. All right, let's get it. We're going to go to the Second Chronicles chapter 29. Second Chronicles chapter 29. Yeah, we'll start that deal at one, brother. We might just have to do a part two. It's all good. Second Chronicles chapter 29, verse one. Uh-huh. Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old. Come on. And he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. Come on. And his mother's name was Abiyah. Yeah, which means my God is Yah. Abiyah. Abi, my God. Yah, my God is Yah. Come on. The daughter of Zechariah. Uh huh. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So I wonder what he did that was right in the sight of God. Let's see what he did. Come on. According to all that David, his father, had done. Come on. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the door to open the doors of the house of the Lord. Now, it went a time where the word wasn't going forth in Hezekiah period. I remember that, right? The temple was straight, just done. They closed the door of the temple. Oh, we in 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 3, brother. They closed the temple doors. Hey, and they was basically giving themselves their own words, for real. But Hezekiah came in the rain, and guess what he did? He said, hold on, we finna open up these temple doors, and we finna dedicate this temple back to Yahweh. Because he had a, he had a heart after his father David, and he, he like, look, how do we got a whole temple and establishment, but we can't do no sacrifices, no nothing to our God? 
So he finna shake the cobwebs off the temple door and get the temple ready and dedicate it back to God. And that's what we're supposed to be doing as kings and priests and prophets of our household. When we see that the, our temple, which is which is our wives, that they got cobwebs, first thing you're supposed to be doing is grabbing them off. Hold on, we got to get that clean. When you see your children's temple doors are shut up, you're supposed to open them. You see that? Pray for them. Teach them. Same thing for your brothers and sisters here in the congregation, because not only do we have a physical temple, but your body is a temple individually. And then the church as a whole is a temple. It's three temples. All of them, the doors must be open and cleansed. And it should be a fire that burn continuously day and night. Continuously. Guess what that fire represents? That fire on the menorah. That represents the seven spirits. The seven spirits of who? Yahweh, which is endowed by the Holy Spirit and ministered by Christ. So do y'all get what that means? So that menorah need to be burning continuously day and night. It won't burn if the temple doors are closed or if it's filth all inside the temple. That's why there were ritualistic cleansing uh, uh, practices in the temple. And that's why that fire had to burn continuously because that fire represents the Holy Spirit of God. How can the spirit dwell in your temple if it's full of filth and if you have the damn doors closed? Y'all get that? So we must open the door and invite Christ in and Christ would dwell with us by way of the Holy Spirit. But the only way that can happen if you are not entertaining sin and you're following the commandments and you truly believe that he is your Lord and Savior. Y'all get that? All right, let's keep reading. Verse three again. He in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. And what? And repaired them. He like, look. The doors were so, look, imagine how long them doors had to been closed. And then remember, the doors was made of gold and brass. Well, them doors had to been rusty in the mug, boy. He said he had to open them, and then he had to repair the doors. Come on. And he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together into the East Street. See that? So he brought them into the temple, and he gathered them together in the East Street, which was by the East Court inside the temple, if you look at that temple build. He had to bring them in to the east, so he's gonna he's gonna holler at them on in the temple. Come on, and said unto them, "Hear me, ye Levites. Come on, sanctify now yourselves. Now, since you're a priest and you're a king, have you done that lately? Have you pulled your wife or your brothers to the side or to the east of the temple and said, hey, purify yourself, brother, cleanse yourself. I help you, huh? Let's get these demons up off of you, for we can worship Yahweh properly. When the last time y'all did that?" Well, last time y'all pulled y'all wives to the side. Hey, you're going off. What, what, what do I have to do to make sure you straight? Uh, let's go pray. Let's fast. Not, not tomorrow. Let's start now. That's what Hezekiah did. He seen that the temple was shut up and that the Most High was not there. He opened the doors to the temple. He repaired it. When the last time you repaired a broken relationship you had with your brother or sister? When the last time you had a broken relationship you had with your mother? Huh? Well, like, well, have you, what have you have you repaired what was going on between husband and wife? See, look, what we're saying, this is physical, but we must imply this spiritually. That's what we're reading this for. The Torah, even though it happened way back then in a physical standpoint, we can still relate to it today only if we apply it spiritually. So today we need to be repairing doors. We need to be repairing breaches. Flat out. You got issue with somebody? Repair it. Repair the temple. Because the church is the temple too, right? And we make up the church, right? So that means if any one of y'all lacking, if any one of y'all is broke or have a contrite heart, then that means it's my job and obligation to be there and help repair you. Ain't this what Hezekiah doing? Not only do we do that, but he invited the priest in. He's going to get them in, or he's going to motivate them and uplift them and say, hey, what the hell are y'all doing? Let's read. And say unto them, hear me, ye Levites. Sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your father. You hear that? He like, hey, look, cleanse yourselves up, purify yourselves. Y'all been devoured. And not only that, but y'all better clean up this house too. Because remember, the only thing he did was repair the doors. Come on. And carry forth the filthiness. Oh, to carry what? Carry forth the filthiness. Carry forth the filthiness. Come on. Out of the holy place. Isn't your body a holy place? Right. Or is it supposed to be? Huh? Is your holy place full of filthiness? Is your holy place full of filthy thoughts, envy, lies, jealousy, lust, hatred? Huh? He say, look, you better carry forth that filthiness out of the holy place. 
Because the, look, Christ and the Holy Spirit would not dwell there if it's filthiness there. Come on. Verse 6. For our fathers have trespassed. Ooh. So look, what made the temple filthy? The fathers did what? Trespass. Sin. Simple sin would defile your body, y'all. Simple sin will defile your body. A defiled body have no spot in the kingdom of God. Come on. And done that which was evil in the sight of the Lord our God. Ooh, come on. And have forsaken him. So when you sin, you forsake God. Did, did we just hear that? When you sin, you defile your body. By your body being defiled, it separates and alienates you from God. And it cuts off his ears from hearing your prayers. So in order to get these things right, you have to do what? Repent from your sin and turn back from it and cleanse your temple. Now God can dwell in you again. That's the whole point of the, ded the dedication. We're dedicating our temples back to who? God, Christ, for the spirit can dwell where? In us. The menorah represents the light. Second Corinthians 4 and 6 says that the light that shines unto us and to the world shines through the face of the glorious who? Jesus Christ. So them all the lights that's on the menorah that's supposed to be, look, burning continually in what? Your temple. I don't know about y'all, but that's deep to me. It just makes dedication. Okay, it's more than just seven, eight days. This is a lifetime thing, huh? This is an eternal thing, huh? Straight up. What's up, Nehemiah? They also make sense, too, because you don't get to seven days, you don't get to establish completeness. Yeah, if you look at the eighth day, you get to the truth of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or the, what is called that great day. And in that day, that eternal day. Yeah. Right, because you get to that day. It's eternal. But I want to upgrade, though, upgrading our thoughts and our spirituality, you can't keep running around committing willful sin and thinking you got no time. No, it's not. It's never been that of old mm -hmm. and it's never been that of new. Fact. Right? You can't walk around here with willful sin. Y'all key is right. You gotta repent. You know what I'm saying? Those are secret sins. Right? But if you truly repent, you're not committing that same sin you did last year. This year. It's called turning that back. You didn't repent. Facts. So I don't want our people get comfortable with this day of atonement. You drop off that old baggage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when you come to Christ, the Bible is clear. You are forgiven of sin. Past. Yeah. Everything now you are accountable. For. Yeah, he was only wounded for our transgression once, y'all. He's not gonna get beat and put back on that tree hung from that tree again, y'all. No, so. man, you're not going Fact. So Fact. just what I'm saying is. Tighten up, Israel, because listen, don't let that one you think you got off say, all right, I made the dedication, I'm good, I made to atonement. I mean, no, listen, that is written, and that one is not removed. Don't let that be the sin because things that blocks. don't get you in. Them the blots, y'all. Hey, I'm just saying, man, look, a little bit higher, and y'all kids on point dead on with it. But I just, I don't want people to get comfortable because, you know, we come for a lot of people. People get comfortable in repetitive sin. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm getting there. Uh -huh. Let me do my thing. That's why I don't. Let me do my thing. I'm, I'm gonna get there. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Let's get it. Verse six again. For our fathers have trespassed. Come on. And done that which was evil in the sight of the Lord our God. Come on, brother. And have forsaken him. Have what? And forsaken him. Come on. And have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord. Come on. And turn their backs. Now check this out, y'all. Check this out. Now here comes a rededicating of the temple. So he's seen the temple. The temple was in trouble. Yahweh wasn't in the temple. The doors of brass and gold was shut up. It was cobwebs all there. He said, dang, I need to dedicate this temple back to God. He opened the doors. He repaired the doors. He called the high priest back in. He told them that they need to sanctify the temple and cleanse it again. And they need to get all the filthiness that they had brought into the temple out of the temple. Now here we go. Verse 8. I mean, verse 7. Also, they have shut up the doors of the porch. See that? They just left the temple, y'all. Come on. And put out the lamps. They put out the lamps, which are supposed to burn continually. Meaning, spiritually, they lost a fire for Yah. We, how many people done lost that fire for Yah? 
quenched their own fire, came in his truth and was like a bat out of hell for it. I mean, everywhere they spitting the truth, waking everybody up, doing everything. And then years and years in, lessons start getting lower and lower. They say, yo, you see they face less and less. And it's not it's not because they in the spirit. It's because they are losing the fire. That's what happened to these priests. Also, they have shut up the doors of the porch. They put out the lamps. Come on. And have not burned incense nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the Lord God. Meaning that they stopped praying. How many of y'all started off on the prayer hours a couple of years ago when we finally came out with the prayer hours and not even going by them no more? Uh, yeah, I am. You know, hallelujah. But how many how many of us that, that don't do them like that no more? And, and went back to turning to the side in the bed and praying real quick before they went to sleep. Wait, waiting until you two minutes into your sleep to pray and get it off real fast. Not spending an intimate time with your Lord and Savior. Huh? How many of us is just like these priests that defile their temple by stop doing their prayer and worship service? Y'all realize that's what defiled the temple, right? They stopped. They shut up the doors to the porch. They blew out all the lamps. And they didn't burn any incense, which means, because remember, prayers go with the incense, right? Meaning the prayers and the sacrifices in the holy place. The holy place is the temple. The temple is now what? The body. They stopped it. Oh, we being inconsistent with Yahweh. That inconsistent spirit is going to defile your temple. Now, my question is, is there a place in the kingdom of God for a defiled temple? No, no it's not. We better get it together. Come on. Verse 8, wherefore the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah Ooh. and Jerusalem. Come on. And he hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, and ye see with your eyes. Come on. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters are our wives, and our wives are in captivity for them. Y'all see that? Y'all see all the calam calamity that happens when we decide to sin? Now look. Let's stop that right quick and let's get into it. So this is the new subject. So if this applies to the physical temple and this apply to the Levite priest, now the priesthood is oh, and the king and the prophet is of Judah. And now the temple is the body. What does that mean for us if we do not dedicate our temple back to Yahweh like Hezekiah did? Oh, we, oh, we, let's get to it. All right, let's go to uh, first Peter, first Peter chapter two. Let's just show that everything did switch over to us now. First Peter, chapter two. Uh, start it wherever you want to start it, Uriel. First Peter, chapter two. You know my verse, verse nine, but whatever you need to start it at. Let's get it. Gonna get deep, y'all. We ain't got too much longer. They finna bring the food. We are gonna feast up, turn on some music, you know. It is the feast, right? Hallelujah. Oh, praise. I'm starting verse five. First Peter chapter two verse five. Let's get it. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. See that? It's talking about this spiritual house. We built up a spiritual house. Remember, the law becomes spiritual. The temple have now become the body. The lights on the menorah have now became the seven spirits of the Holy Spirit that dwell within you, that shines through the glorious face of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All these things now apply to your physical being, your physiology. Come on. A holy priesthood. A what? A holy priesthood. So we are holy priesthood now. So if we are a priesthood, don't priests have to have a temple? Well, we don't got no big temple made from $13 billion no more. So the temple that we worship in now is what? Our bodies. And when all these many temples get together, it makes a big temple called the church or the sanctuary. Come on. So off of spiritual sacrifice. Now, what is the spiritual sacrifice? Because we ain't sacrificing bullocks and goats no more. Now your spiritual sacrifices is prayer and worship and keeping the feast. That's our spiritual sacrifices now. Come on. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And this is only acceptable by way of Christ. So if it wasn't for Christ, we'll still be having to cut goat necks and all of that. Thank God for Christ, right? Because I ain't, I ain't into animal purity at all. All right, come on. Verse 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. So wherefore also is what? Contained in the scripture. Come on. Behold, I lie, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. He let. He what? He let. Come on. Press. Come on. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Come on, brother. And to you. 
therefore which believe the expression, but unto them which believe which be disobedient, uh -huh. the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made in the head of the corner. Come on, brother. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of our offense, even to them which stumble at the word. Ooh, come on. Being disobedient, were unto also they were appointed. Come on, brother. Verse 9. But ye. Uh, notice he said, but. But ye. Come on. Or a chosen generation. Said, we are a chosen generation. Remember, the priesthood then went over from the order of Melchizedek to the order of Aharon back to the order of Melchizedek. When Christ came and he shed his blood on the Christ on the cross and he gave us the blood and washed us by the blood, right? We went back under the order of Melchizedek. This is where the law had become spiritual. Remember, the temple was destroyed. An earthquake came. Dead even raised that day when Christ died. Remember, it was a resurrection and all type of stuff. The, the sun blotted out his light. The, the, I mean, the, the, veil, look, the earthquake was so hard that the veil in the temple rent. And we crossed back under over to that spiritual law. Meaning that I can kill my brother without killing him. All I got to do is hate him and I killed him. Meaning I can commit adultery without sleeping with another man's wife. All I got to do is look at her in a sexual manner and that's adultery. Meaning that this law have truly became spiritual. So if the law became spiritual, that means the temple became spiritual. So now the temple is your mind. The temple is your body. Y'all see that? So all of these ritualistic practices still have to happen. Just in a spiritual way. Come on. Verse 9 again. And ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, in the holy nation, a peculiar people. See that? A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Now you see back, we read why they had all them cleansing rituals, why they couldn't touch dead bodies, why they couldn't marry harlots. Why they had to wash their hands and wash their feet before they went into the holies of holies. Why they had to wear a certain garment. He just said it. You got to do all that because you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood and you are a holy nation, a peculiar people. You special. You not like everybody else. Straight up. Come on. That you should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let's get it. Let's get another one. Revelation 5. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. Let me get this uh, verse 10. Here. Go ahead, brother. It said, which in time past were not a people. Ooh, come on. For a now the people of God. We the people of who? People of God. Why ain't we acting like it? Come on. If you are people of God, that means God must be dwelling in you. Why is it so many em empty temples full of filthiness? If we are people of God. Well, we, we defile. And we need to cleanse ourselves, purify ourselves, and dedicate our temples back to Yahweh. Come on. Which, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Come on. All right, let's get it. Look, let's go into uh, let's go into Revelations 5 and 10. Let's do a couple quick hitters real quick. Revelations 5 and 10. Revelations 5 and 10. Let's just get a witness for that. Revelations chapter 5, verse 10. And has made us unto our God, kings and priests. You see that? So what are we all? Kings and priests. And, priests. and prophets. You king, priest, and prophet. But you ain't acting like it. You acting like the nigga from the street. Huh? You acting like the pit bull with the pink thing hanging out. Huh? Or you ruling your house with an iron fist. Huh? You like a, a pit bull that eat blood all day in your own household. Everybody walking on eggshells. Everybody scared to say something. Huh? You king, priest, and prophet of the household. We, that's a great responsibility, y'all. Y'all realize that, right? You a chief of your household. Run it. Put your foot down. Regulate. Move like you Christ. Ain't you supposed to be putting on Christ, right? right. Mm, okay. Come on. And has made us unto our God, kings and priests. And we shall reign. Ooh. We shall reign Ooh, look. on the earth. Not if we reign. Not we might. We shall reign on the earth. On the earth. That's talking about the new kingdom. Y'all know that, right? That's why we have to be undefiled. For we can actually run in the new kingdom and run the earth with Christ and King David. But before we even get to that stage, he has to present us without spot or wrinkle.
to Yahweh. He have to prevent us. Blame. We can't be blameless. I mean, blameful. We have to be blameless. We have to be just like he was when he was able to be accepted as a sacrifice by God for our sins. We are literally we are literally trying to mimic the example that was sent here for us, which is Christ. Become Christ. That's the best way to be clean is by come, becoming him. Put you on Christ. Be a new creature. Renewed by your mind and spirit. Cleanse the temple. What's up, brother? Because he always told us that it's our righteousness to precede those of the first. Yeah. Those that are in charge of the first. Yeah. Right. So the outer cup said, Oh, this brother's boy, he's an Israelite indeed. Like you said, that inside, within that temple, is what is defiled. Yeah. And that's why you have to bring that out. You got to bring that mess out. You got to get out. Right. All back in the order that each of us. Facts, facts. I, I agree. Let's keep it going. Hey, look, let's stop there right there. Uh, man, there's so many things. I can, so many ways I can take this. Let's go in Second Corinthians chapter five. Second <laughs> Corinthians chapter five. We're gonna read one through six. A few more scriptures. A few more. <laughs> hey, straight up. I started doing my. How you be outlining yours? That's how I do mine now. Second Corinthians chapter five. Got them all in subjects and everything. Right, 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 right. We're gonna do one through six. Yeah, footnotes. I'll be writing what I'm talking about on the side of them. So look, check this out. This speaking of my footnotes, this is what I wrote. So look, this is how purified Israel was supposed to be. We had a cleansing ritual if we had a scab on our body. Because a scab on your body, Yahweh looked at you like you was unclean. We had a cleansing ritual for skin disease like leprosy. We had a cleansing ritual for a woman who came on her ministration. We had a cleansing ritual and period for a woman who gave birth. And the time length of that, the, of that separation cleansing ritual was the difference between having a boy or a girl. We had a cleansing ritual for us coming into the temple. Each different size of the temple, whether you was going into the inner court, the outer court, or the holies of holies. Each stage you had to cleanse and wash yourself. We had a cleansing ritual on a type of women we can marry. We had a cleansing ritual on a type of funerals we can hold and bodies that we can touch. We had a cleansing ritual on type of foods, a dietary law of things we can put in our body. We had a cleansing ritual on our hair, on the stages you can wear, whether it be bald or whether it grow. We had a cleansing ritual on our beards, on our garments, what we can wear. Do y'all realize how clean we have been called to be? I mean, that's crazy. It ain't even went a while, though. That's just Leviticus 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 21. And we ain't even gotten to the other ones. That's how clean he expect us to be. Oh, we. Y'all up for the challenge? That's right. Yeah, ooh. Yeah, ooh. All right. Yeah, we going to see. Y'all, y'all, we going to see. Uh -huh. <laughs> Time will tell. All right, let's get it. All right, so we're in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Start from one, brother. Y'all get some understanding so far? Yeah. Amen. Hello, y'all. Everybody online, y'all get some understanding? Type in some amens for me. Let's get this started. We got a few more scriptures and we're going to do a part two. Yeah, Second Corinthians chapter five, start that deal at uh, verse one. All right, let's get it. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse one. For we know that if our earthly house. Uh -huh. So but if we know that our earthly house, come on. Of this tabernacle. Of this tabernacle. At this time, y'all realize there is no tabernacle. Right. So what is he talking about? His earthly house. And he called it a tabernacle, a sanctuary. He's talking about his body. Come on. We're dissolved. Meaning if he died. But notice what he called his body. He called it a earthly tabernacle, a temple. Come on. We have a building of Elohim. Come on. In house, not made with hands. See that? So your house, this house wasn't made by the hands of another man. This was un uniquely made by the hands of Yahweh. How he created Adam from afar, the ground, a dama, from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into him, and he became a living soul. That was created by God, right? So Adam, earthly tabernacle, came from God, which means our earthly tabernacles that we call from that we call bodies come from God as well. So the body is indeed the temple, right? The temple must be dedicated and devoted to its creator. Come on. Internal in the heaven. It's what? Internal in the heaven. Come on. Four, verse 2. 
For for if for in this we grow uh -huh. earnestly, come on, desiring to be clothed to be what to be clothed. It's like look, we design, look, we dedicate, we grown, we dead and dedicated our earthly tabernacles. So much to Yahweh, we groan because we want to be clothed with our new tabernacles, our new body. That's called glorified bodies, which you will find in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The glorified body. So he groans for that. But in order to get the glorified body, you have to mortify your members. Members make up what, y'all? The body. <laughs> the body is what? The temple. That must be dedicated to who? Christ. God, Yahweh, and not joined to no harlots, which is every manner of sin anyway. Harlotry can be all types of stuff. Idolatry is a uh, is a is harlotry, y'all. Just to let y'all know, fornication, spiritual fornication, is all the same thing, physically and uh, metaphysically, spiritually. All right, come on. Verse two again. Uh huh. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with upon with our house, which is from heaven. Ooh, come on. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. See that? So if you clothe, look, this is deep. A lot of people don't understand what he just said. If you are clothed and your body is the temple of God, you should never be found naked. Do y'all know what naked mean? Adam and Eve was found naked in the garden. And what they do? Didn't they sin? See that? That means to be found shameful, found in sin. So he said, if your body is the temple of God, you should never be caught naked. Never. Oh, we. That's deep. That's deep. Come on, let's read this. For we that are in this tabernacle. In what? This tabernacle. Talking about the body, the temple. For we that's in these bodies. Come on. You grown. Uh huh. Being burdened. Being what? Being burdened. Because this body comes with a whole lot of limitations, y'all. It stink. It fort. It poop. It pee. It gets old. Wrinkles. Scabs. Hair fall out. I mean, there's all types of things that happen to this body. Come on. Not for that. We would be unclothed. Come on. But clothed upon. See, so it's like we can't wait till we lose this tabernacle to get our spiritual tabernacles, to get our spiritual temples, to get our spiritual bodies, because it's, it's eternal. It's infinity. Come on. That morality might be swallowed up of life. All right, we can stop that. Let's keep it going. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Start that deal at uh, 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, family. So now, what are we supposed to be dedicating on the Feast of Dedication? Our what? Our temple. What, and what is the temple? Body. Your right. body. Straight up. Your spiritual body. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to start this deal at 13. Unless you want to read. I start at 12. All right, let's get it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Uh -huh. All things are lawful unto me. But all things are not expedient. Mm -hmm. All things are lawful for me. But I will not be brought under the power of any. Come on. Meat for the belly and the belly for the meat. Come on. But God shall destroy both it and them. Ooh, come on. Now the body is not for fornication. See that? The body is what? Not for fornication. Because the body is what? The temple. No. Ain't no fornication supposed to be going down in the temple. That's a direct act of war against Yahweh. And that's what happened in Maccabees. These Negroes destroyed the temple, threw down our menorahs, ripped up our pews and everything, and then put the God of Jupiter up in that deal and started worshiping the sun God and had gay homosexual orgies in our temple. Now, a lot of us are doing that mentally in your own temple. And physical. Yeah. Or, in, or mentally, but you're doing it with your temple. And fornication, look, you sin with the body, but you sin against your own body. You straight sinning against your temple. That's deep, man. How you do that? And, and you most definitely are profaning and, and defiling the earth, too. Let y'all know. Like the earth straight take a hit for fornication. Y'all know that, right? Yes, sexual sins pollute the earth, y'all. That's deep. See what Jerusalem was crying out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, straight. Earth was straight crying out. Yeah, come on. Now the body is not for fornication. Now the what? The body is not for fornication. Come on. But for the Lord. See that? So the body or the temple is not for fornication and sin, but it's for Christ to come and dwell in. Come on. And the Lord for the body. And Christ is for the what? The body. Because the body represents the bride, the church. And the Lord represents the husband, the Lord. Come on. 
And God have both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own body. Come on. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Do you know that your bodies are the members of Christ? We make up Christ. He's the head, but we make him up. All these little bitty mini temples make one big temple. And the holies of holies are the head of the temple is Christ. But you using your temple to serve other gods. Imagine bringing a statue of Jupiter up in here, putting it right up here, and we bowing down and worshiping. See, we shaking our heads saying, no, nah, and God forbid, but we do that every day when we entertain sin. See, we, we wouldn't do that act, right? But you do that act every day, you entertain sin in your mind. You do that, that act every day, you lie. You do that act every day, you treat your wife like she ain't ish. You do that act every day when wives disobey their husbands and, and not being submissive. You see that? We, we do that act every day. Just because we're not blatantly disrespecting God don't mean that he's going to take your hiding sins as it ain't disrespect. That's still disrespectful, if not more disrespectful to him. Because he like, at least be hard enough to do it to my face. Straight up. Y'all see that? It sounds harsh, huh? Bringing the, the God of Saturn up here and falling down on your face and worshiping Saturn. That sounds oh so messed up. But a Negro would entertain sin all day in his temple and be willing to accept, and be willing to accept that. I don't know. I think that's worse than us. <laughs> both, of them, both of them lead to death. But I'd rather be the upfront one that's just going to all out disrespect and be the one hiding and still going to the lake of fire. The destination is still the same because you have an undefiled temple. That's deep. You can't even let everybody up in your temple. No, you can't. Go on to temple. Facts. Come on, let's read it. Verse 15. And we read that in Leviticus 21, right? Guard your temple. You can't lay down with everybody. See that? You can't touch dead bodies. Uh, you got to keep your head covered at all times. I mean, we read so many cleansing ritualistic practices and ceremonies to keep you pure for Christ to dwell in you. And we're not doing none of that spiritually now. When last time one of y'all fasted in your own head? I know. I know. What are we doing? I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, I already know the answer. But what are we doing? Hey, come on. Verse 15 again. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Ooh. And look, you notice that was a question. Like, meaning he being sarcastic. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? He waiting for an answer. Like, y'all going off. Come on. So I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an holy. If your body belonged to Christ and Christ was a pure example of a person undefiled, would you take his members and go stick the members into a harlot? Would you go stick that member or that covenant into a woman that served other gods? Would you go do homosexual activities with these members when they Christ? It's like you damn near trying to make him sin. A person that is without sin. Do y'all realize that's an act of war and blasphemy? What we're doing with our bodies because you have this preconceived notion that it belongs to you when it don't. It's not, it don't belong to you. You didn't make it. If you didn't make it or create it, it ain't yours. Did you make it create you? Uh, so, how is it yours? So, why are we doing what we want to do with somebody else's vehicle? This ain't even your vehicle. That's deep. Well, we got a little. We, we have some answering to do in that great terrible day, y'all. It's best that we cleanse and mortify our temples now. What Hezekiah tell them? He, he said he said he called the high priest in the east of the temple. He told them, "Hey, sanctify yourselves and get all this filthiness up out this temple, straight up." And that's what I'm telling y'all today. That's my message: sanctify yourselves and get all that filthiness out of your temples. Talking to myself, including all of it, because if he come. And he do inspection and he find mold or any of these things that he don't like. You will not get acceptance in his kingdom. The kingdom is not ours. Y'all realize it, right? So it's an invitation. If you have to be invited somewhere, that means it ain't yours. Straight. Hey, that's deep. Or for yours, for yours is the kingdom. Straight up. Hey, that's deep, boy. Imagine that. Everybody get an invitation to a party, the best party that's going on in the history of Hebrews, and you ain't invited. Or 
or just reject the invitation in, in general because like with the messiah he went he sent his servant and told his servant to go get them and tell them to come to the feast all these men had different excuses why they was not going to come to the feast so he ended up saying he said you know what since they don't want to come go get the lame the blind and the sick and then they came to the feast and he told them hey look fill my house up they didn't want it i invited them to the feast got they didn't want it. free invitation so i'm gonna give it to those who who most people no not even now or give it to the people who everybody think is not worthy oh that's deep and that's now that's that's deep right there you get on your class you talked about dealing with priests that you was lame blind deaf certain things knows your contour you know what i'm saying you couldn't be a priest so let us how great you brought that out we're not saying that those people are still not people of god we're not saying those people don't have access to the kingdom they just can't perform the temple do yeah but what's crazy yes. was that was under the law of Aharon, under right. the order of Melchizedek. It just said, hey, bring me our feet. Come, yeah. come on. Oh. Everybody, you, you, a, you, you can't get priests regardless, by default. You can't, look, you can't choose to be a king or priest today. You are king and priest by default, meaning that you have to fulfill the obligations of being king, priest, and prophet of your household and of the church. You can't, you, you can't choose it. It's by default. He said it. You are a holy people, a priesthood, a holy priesthood. A nation of king and priests. Revelation 5 said the same thing. So y'all best better start fulfilling them duties. And look, you have to perfect it at home first. Otherwise, you'll be a hypocrite. And hypocrites are vipers and snakes, and they will not get into the kingdom of God. How is you, how is you a king and priest when it comes to the congregation, but you suck as a whole man, a whole asshole at the house? Get it together. Fix your stuff. Fix your stuff. Yeah, for real. Because I mean, even with the conversations, man, we gotta be holy in conversation too. Yeah. I mean, men and women in in general, like men, stop just bashing the women. That's the whole new way of the world now. All the men are bashing the women, 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 women. Obey your husband. That that's just order. If everybody just fall in line and fall in order, the the, the house of God will be pure. Facts. I agree. Too too many times we let Satan get in the midst of. The relationship that's what happened in the garden satan got in the midst of what the man and the woman yeah and that's what paul is saying satan is going to get in the midst of man and woman and you or or eve and christ is Hamashiach. he's at it's the exact same thing we just have to be aware we have to know our enemy too many times we still be listening to our enemy whether we want to admit it or not it's just what it is hey facts i have nothing to say about that all right let's get it all right first corinthians 6 and 15 Verse 16, it said, What know ye not that he which is joined to an holy is one body? Come on, for two said he shall be one flesh. Come on, but he that is joined into the Lord is one spirit. Come on, brother, flee fornication. Said, Flee fornication. Come on, every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Ooh, come on, but he that committed fornication sinned against his own, own body. body. Come on, what? No, ye not that your body. That what? That your body. He's speaking to the Corinthians, right? So he's speaking for, to a whole congregation of people by answering letters. What he say? That your body, talking to everybody that's a part of the church, right? So when we be included in, inside of this, because we are Israelites, right. so our body is what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Which is in you. Which is what? In you. Come on. Which ye have of God. Come on. And ye are not your own. We are not our own. We don't own this flesh. It's leased to us. And he's taking it back. Look this stuff up, y'all. It's called the circadian rhythm. Your heart have a biological clock on it. Your, your liver, your pancreas, all these things have biological clocks. Do y'all know they found with inside of the DNA code that the clock run out? Straight up. It runs out. Sound like scripture. Every man is, is appointed what? Once to die. After that is what? The judgment. How they do? I got a movie like that. Uh, circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm. And it's ran by your pineal gland. It's called a melanin bio clock. Uh, a melanin bio clock. I'm doing a whole lesson on it Tuesday for my Tuesday live. Everywhere in your body straight got a clock. Meaning, meaning that look, when you say er, it, once every man was appointed to die, the scripture is very real when it say that. You have a clock. You have a number. You don't know it. But inside the DNA, they found it through the enzymes and the melanin transmitters, what we're going to call neurotransmitters in the body. It's a clock on it. It's a straight clock. And that clock got a time on it way before you was even born. Now, ain't that something? 
Way before you was even born, before you came out of your mother's womb, it was already within your DNA when you was going to die. We are literally living to die. The moment that you are born, you start dying. And we playing around, wasting time. Hey, look, the deeper and deeper I learn and get into science, the more my mind get blown about God. I'm like, let me quit playing. Let me cleanse this temple. Because I, I don't know, my clock can be tonight, God forbid. You never know when your clock is, but you know that there's a clock. Straight up. Every Do y'all look? Everybody in here have to die. Y'all realize that, right? Yeah. Why we act like we don't be realizing that, though? Little precious babies, uh, we are going to die. Y'all understand that? So if we understand that and we got, look, we got death all around us. Oh, we see people dropping like flies, let alone the news, vaccinations, mandated vaccinations. Uh, uh, I mean, man, GMO, it's just everything is jacked up. And we still playing around. Oh, we are insane. At this point, that is insanity. Do y'all realize that? That is insanity. You have a psychological problem. You are a psychosociopath. You know that you finna die, but you still doing everything in the world that's going to keep you from meeting your eternal body. Boy, if that ain't the most stupidest thing in the world, you know you got to die. Though. And you feel it before you go to sleep at night. You feel it. You think about it. What if? What if I don't wake up? Well, I think about that. What if? That hunt everybody at night. If you know a little bit about truth. What if I don't wake up? I know I ain't going. So why the hell did you live your day in sin? Why did you live your day in sin? We're the only people that don't prep or prepare for nothing. Not for war, not for drought, not for famine, not for the kingdom. We just don't prepare. We just out here just living, living a sinful, defiled life. Living my best life. Living, huh? YOLA, you only live once. Then you die. <laughs> boy, all right, boy. Hey, we better get it together. Come on. 19 again. 19 again. What? No, ye not. That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, Ooh. which is in you. Come on. Which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Yeah, what? Not your own. Come on. Verse 20. But ye are bought with a price. See that? We bought. We're owned. Just like how you buy your virgin, you own her. She's your possession. We're bought. Then we did some harlotry, got divorced, and then got bought back into the family, which is so much mercy. Straight up, because we are spiritual whores, y'all. Therefore, we don't have any bar, we don't have no bargaining. We spiritual whores. What do, how are we bargaining with our husband? We're not even listening. We're very unsubmissive. You just slept around with multiple dudes, and we we trying to tell him how to run us as a nation of Israel. Use the hoe. You don't have any, you can't, you don't have no negotiation stance. Yeah, we got bodies. We got spiritual bodies like a mug. Why you making a man to our husband? Yeah. Making demands to Christ. And we the whore. Even if we was the virgin, we couldn't even have we don't even have no negotiation there. Follow the father to your husband. You see that? But we spiritual whores have been in all manner of practices of religions, but we get mad on how our husband tell us to how our husband tell us to submit. Make no sense. Who we come on the man. Verse 20, for ye are bought with a price. Come on. Therefore, glorify God in your body. See that? You have to glorify God in your body. Now, glorification, if you look it up in Hebrew, it means kabod. One that shineth forth. Something that shines forth. That means when I look upon y'all, I'm supposed to see Christ. I'm supposed to see Christ in you, 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 and you. And in you women over there, I'm supposed to see your husband, which is your Lord. I'm supposed to be able to look at you and see your husband. I'm supposed to be able to look at you, sister, and see Yach Ellie. I'm supposed to be able to look at you, sister, and I'm supposed to... Where, where, you see Darius, but I'm talking about my brother. No, no, I'm talking about God in the city, little head, but I can't even see him. A head back there. You ducked off, brother Gilded. Dang. But I'm, I'm supposed to look at you, sister, and see him. And we supposed to straight... Y'all supposed to look at me and see Christ. We're not doing that. We're not being the reflection of our heads, of our gods. We're being the reflections of everything that he don't want. And you know that, just speak your daily conversation. What you getting into it about? We into it about because somebody ain't doing right, right? Who we? If everybody is living how they're supposed to and playing their roles and their temple is undefiled, there wouldn't be no arguments or no issues nor no debates. 
That's how the temple ran so smoothly. And they dealt with death. They went off, they got killed. <laughs> Straight up. That's why you see a temple being burned for 100 years in the temple, nonstop. That's why you see teachings going forth and, and big old feasts that millions and millions gathered and people came from out of the cities and out of different countries to come up and worship. Because they was that organized because they had to be. They didn't have a choice. Because the moment that the high priest messed up, since they was called to such high responsibility, the most high whacked them. They got killed. They were scared to death. It's going to be worse with us, though. It's going to be worse with us. But since it's not, since the judgment is not quick, since the karma or, or sowing and reaping is not right now, we think that we got time and we don't. Your judgment going to be 10 times worse than that high priest that was dingling inside that temple and the bell stopped ringing. And they had to drag him and pull him out the temple. Yeah, there. Yeah, they got theirs right then. You got caught fornication, they bricking your head off right then. You got caught disrespecting your parents, they took you out to the city and bricked you. If and if the father and the mother had a problem with that, guess what? You got tied up right next to your disobedient, disrespectful child, they bricked you with them. Hey, I'm talking, you got caught catching sticks on the Sabbath day, you getting bricked. You a witch, you getting burned. You a harlot, you getting bricked. Straight up. You got, you got caught being disobedient, you getting scorched. It was immediate penalty. Imagine, imagine if we still was doing that right now. You wouldn't do it as much. But Christ said he got something that's way more harsh. Yeah, you get you get time to you know live in your wickedness, but that that punishment gonna be ten times worse than them bricks. That's why uh, it's Iraq. It's Iraq. You say uh, concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Hey, flat out. Because in that day. Look, all that's gonna be written down. You, you're gonna be, you know, judged for. It. Man, it's something called the apocalypse of Peter, right? Well, oh, y'all read that. It talks Whoa. about it talks about how you suffer in the lake of fire for the sins you did. Man, that scared the bejeebas out of me, man. And, and and according to each of your sins, you get a different type of penalty and eternity of suffering from a hideous angel. It's called the apocalypse of Peter. Read that. That will blow your. That lets you know about how sin. Look. Boy, it's levels to this, y'all, for real. It's levels to this. All right, come on. We done with that? You sure? All right, let's get, let's get Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 started at 25. Ephesians 5 and 25. Then we're going to do uh, two more scriptures to get up out of here. Ephesians 5 and 25. Yep, that's right. That should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Ephesians 5 and 25. Yep, let's get it. Ephesians 5, verse 25. Come on, brother. Husbands, love your wives, even as Hamashiach also loved the church. Come on. And gave himself for it. Come on. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Y'all see what he need to do with our bodies? He's sanctifying our bodies and cleansing our bodies by the washing of water by the word. So, what's going to cleanse our temples? The word of God. That's the blueprint. Straight up. It's going to show you with a mop at, with a light saw at. It's going to show you with the incense, the incense at, the fabuloso, all of it. Whatever you need to clean. You have a blueprint, a book called the Bible you can go to, but you can get the, necess the, the necessary educational tools to properly cleanse your temple. Straight up. Come on. Verse 27. Now look, hold on. So this is the purpose for your temple needing to be undefiled. Here go the purpose right here. That he might present it to himself. See that? So he want to present it to what? Himself. Himself. Come on. A glorious church. A glorious church. Showing you that he ain't finna be unevenly yoked either. He ain't finna go marry a, a, a flat out harlot that's unrepentant. He ain't finna marry nobody that's not on his level. Because he want to present it to himself. He want to be able to look at his wife and see him. That just make you, that just make you really... Make your relationships very, very, you know, you're going to search them out. You're really going to go through your court processes and everything before you lay down. Because you want to make sure that y'all assimilate each other properly. We just out here just, we look up. Y'all got five more wives. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sisters just been through all time. Sisters and had ten husbands in the truth. Like, how is that? <laughs> we just going off when it comes to relationships. But if we look at it from a Christ standpoint of view or from a Leviticus 21 point of view, we would take these relationships way more serious. You see what I'm saying? Straight up. Because they knew the judgment was expedient. Yes, they knew. Come on, let's get it. Verse 27 again. That he might present it to himself, 
a glory church, right? Not having spot or wrinkle, right? Or anything, or any such thing, or any such thing. Y'all heard that? So look, he ain't only saying we better not have sin. He said you better not have nothing that even look like sin up in my temple. That's deep. Let's read that. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. If it appear to be sin, guess what it is? Sin. If a man know to do good and do it not, the same is counted to him as what? Sin. This is spiritual law. It's way beyond that. It's way beyond that. Yeah, I know that if he divorced his wife and, and, and she's free, but since that my brother, will I go and have his wife? No. That's a sin because it's going to make him feel some type of way. Yeah, it will. So is that a good thing? No. So that will be counted as what to me? Sin. Why are we trying to act like this is, you know, it's all just a political law theory. No. This is spiritual. Come on. But that it should be holy. That it should be what? Holy. Holy means completely set apart for one's deity. You devote it. Come on. And without blemish. Come on. So ought men to love their wives as their own body. Right. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Let's stop it like that. Showing you that Christ. Look, showing you that Christ really loved us because Christ loved himself, right? He loved us so much that he died for us. He actually second-guessed it. He's like, look, Father, could you take this cup from me? I got to die for all these wicked niggas. <laughs> all these wicked Hey, when they in the guard, hey, look, for real, he straight asked. He's like, look, Lord, if you can, if I mean, I will. Will. if it be your will, I'd rather, I'd rather live long and not even go out for all these. You know, I've been betrayed. Judas done turned his back. I can just imagine, because he still was in a human form. He had emotions. He wept. You know, he groaned. I can just imagine how betrayed and how he felt. He straight second guessed it for me. Like, look, God, if it be your will, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. But look, take this cup from me. It's kind of too much for I can bear. Most I like, no, you know what I'm saying? I, I, it ain't your will. And I, and I love them enough. I'm trying to bring them back to the family. He like, dang, let me go take this beating and let me go and get up out of here for my people. Y'all see that? But do y'all see how important y'all temples is? Do y'all see the holy high calling and standard that he has for each and every one of our bodies? Do y'all see the purification rituals that we had to endure just to serve Yahweh properly? That's how important your temple is. So today we need to dedicate our temples back to Yahweh right now. It don't need right to be it don't need to be tomorrow or none of that. Because your body do not belong to you. Who it do who it belong to, fellas? My sisters, who your body belong to. Your okay, king, yep, your husband. All praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all get it. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Mom, most definitely. Yeah. He said it too. Remember when he was crying? Because he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? No, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. But let you know, like he he actually became a curse. Like yeah. the curses went upon him. Yeah. Because one of the curses is like well, you're gonna be praying to the father. It's like the heavens gonna be like brass. Yeah. Or curse be the man that hang it from a tree. Hang it from a tree. Just right. like look, all those curses fell upon him. So yeah. we look past it. It's like they like he's very important. Very important. Very. A lot, a lot of people don't look at him as if he's the most important thing. He is. Without him, we wouldn't have life. Without yeah. him, we wouldn't be created. Without him, we wouldn't have the children. Without him, you wouldn't have understanding. Yeah. Without him, you wouldn't have the sex. Yeah. Without him, you wouldn't have the peace. Without him, you wouldn't know the most high. He is the word. He is the word from Yahweh. Without him, we wouldn't have nothing to say to God because he is the word. Man, Christ is God, man. Yeah, most definitely. Flat he out. is God. <laughs> Christ is the Almighty God, everlasting yeah, Father. Yeah, that's, that's, deep. that's deep. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why it's like he 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 made sure he sent us the Holy Holy Spirit back to us, so we wouldn't feel what lonely, lonely or comfortless. Yep, comfortless. Like that's why he sent the Holy Spirit back. It's like he's the Father. When you look, we was talking. I was Isaiah reading this the other 11. day. It's like the word fatherless and the word comfortless. If you look them same words up, they mean the exact same thing. So when he when they said that he is the Almighty God the and Evelyn, the Father, everlasting, the everlasting Father. Father. He said, "I'm not gonna leave you fatherless. So I'm gonna send you the Holy Spirit to comfort you. Ooh, I'm your Father." Yeah, hey, yo. It's like, look, thank you most for my Hey, for real. I like. Yeah.
That was a lesson in itself, wasn't it? Hey, that's deep. All right, pray. Hallelujah. So we got some understanding. Amen. Amen. All praise. All right, let's pray on now. Uh, hit, up, hit up the ribs and ask some wild food and stuff. Like that. If they aren't wives, y'all going off. What's the food? <laughs> y'all pull that food up here at 3 30. They going off. Well, yeah, Ania, Kawhi, where y'all at? All praise. All praise. Hey, crack that door real quick. It's hot. Yeah, hot What's the spirit? You turn that deal down to like 60 or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Ellie, put that deal in the door. Yeah. Uh, we gotta we're gonna wait till uh broke it back in. I seen it. I like it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh praise. I'm glad everybody has some understanding, understanding, and understanding. Right. Are y'all ready? Yabareka Yahweh Veish Merita Yahweh Yahweh Pona Elika Vikuneka Yesa They are saying the Hello, I 
You end it off. Hey, straight up. Make sure we cleanse our body, minds, and temples. Rededicate that temple back to Yod Hey Wav Hey. And uh, look, don't be making no plans to do it. Do it now. And no excuses, man. And no excuses. Flat no out. and sin no more. Flat out. Hallelujah. So uh, hopefully this lesson was uh full of spiritual understanding, uh, understanding, and understanding. Uh, we coming into the third day of the Ha. Hanukkah, the feast of uh, dedication. Make sure that y'all dedicating your minds, your bodies, and your spirits back to Yahweh. All right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 